Okay, today I'm joined with Miss Shona Virtual, the creator of The Virtue Method, celebrity yoga instructor, celebrity trainer, Australia's finest Fijian Indian author, content creator, YouTuber. Love this. Leading female fitness trainer, not only in the UK, but in the Australia. Hey, Shona, what's going Spit on? Spit them bars. Oh, Holy no. shit. Do you feel, does that hype you up? Does that it boost does. your ego? I'm like, ooh, all right, ready. Ready to go. Thank you for that. It's all right. It's all right. How are you doing? I'm very good. It's been a while. It's been so long. I was just saying <laughs> before we hit record, like we actually haven't caught up. So I'm I'm nervous because we haven't spoken in other than voice notes. In, yeah. Like prop. I mean, at least has it been years since we've actually sat in front of each other? I last saw you probably in Bondi in 2021. <laughs> Seriously? 21? Was it? No. I, I, did, I think so. Did we not see each other in England? No, nah. we didn't catch up last year. Nah, <gasps> busy. Everyone was busy. It's weird, isn't it? Like you, when, you, when you're here, it's just things pop up and you can schedule things in, but I'm sure you're quite similar as well. Like, you kind of schedule things in. You don't lock it in because things I, come up. I know, but you have to. But I also feel like that's very Australian of you, actually. Really? I thought it was just very Turkish of me. It might be very Turkish <laughs> of you. That's true. That's true. Maybe it's an ethnic thing. Maybe it's a brown thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's an ethnic it, thing It's for like, sure. because I feel like in Australia, no one locks anything in because you're like, yeah, mate, we'll just like catch up. Let's catch up later. And it just never happens. But in the UK, I feel like people are really like, I have shit to do. If you want to get this done, let's book it in. What are you doing? In seven weeks. <laughs> yeah, it is more than Australia. And I hate that. <laughs> it, is Austra- it is more than that. Yeah. But I feel like with people that do work in our sort of space, yeah. whatever space that is, I don't even know how to put it. I don't even know what word it is. Like, what would you even call it? I always struggle with this. I struggle too. Yeah, you mean when people say, like, what do you do? Like, what do you do? Like, what do you, what do you actually, like, if I ask, like, I'm asking you, what do you do? What would you say to someone? I, I, so my usual answer is um, personal trainer, yoga teacher, content creator student like yeah there's no one answer right it's don't like, you think that like almost belittles w- the impact that you give like oh that's nice of you to say so but i i, I mean yeah maybe I mean, it's really hard isn't it because it's like it doesn't really define i think like humans we're, we're we're multi-dimensional and so it's never really that easy even for people that like have just one job that are like oh yeah i'm an accountant they probably feel belittled too right because they're like well yeah this is what i do for money but i'm also into xyz do you know what I mean? Mm, okay. So I get what you're saying. It is hard when someone's like, what's your job? I'm like, I just say I work, work in health and fitness. Or sometimes yeah. I even go, I'm a student. I'm going to get on to that as well, actually. We will get on to that as well. But do you think if you said something like, because technically, hmm. you're an entrepreneur. Ooh. But that's it's such a corny thing to say, isn't it? I remember like one time we was, uh, me and Smith were in Bali and we just met these people and they were like, yeah, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. And I was just like, wow, that sounds so wanky. <laughs> I know, but you have to embrace it. I, I think there's in some places it is. Yeah, I would say I'm a she e o. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, no, I'm not ever going to say go. that. No, no, no. No, nah, you doing it? You have said no, that. No, 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 no. Lean in, fam. Lean in. <laughs> um, no, no. I think like it all just depends on your perception of these words, right? I get it. But then, what if you were to sort of break down that? What success are you limiting from yourself if you have some discomfort with the idea of saying I'm an entrepreneur? Mm. Like in Australia, I mean, we've talked about this before, actually, but in Australia, there's a real issue with tall poppy syndrome. Yeah, big time. And so maybe people listening won't relate to it that much, but people in Australia will. But basically in Australia, you know, if you, there's a certain way in which you have to describe your success, you can sort of say it, but then you have to very, very quickly, almost in the following sentence, um, you know, self-deprecate because you can't, it's sort of like, the attitude tends to be like, oh, mate, I'm just not trying to be a good person. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> it's it's great. Everyone wants to identify with being a good person. But I do think that, you know, when I come to the UK, people embrace the idea that we're all striving for success yeah. in different ways. We all have yeah. different metric for what success is, but I think yeah. everyone's always trying to, to get somewhere. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, there isn't. So if your perception of um, a word like entrepreneur <clears throat> or success or you know, career success is got some funny stuff to it. Mm. How is that limiting you in your everyday life? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't think it is for you. 
But I yeah. get what you're saying. Like the, yeah. when someone's like, I'm an entrepreneur, it's like, what does that really mean? Yeah, because then I think people can take it completely the other way as well. So like, I, I wouldn't, I don't think I would say that until I've banked a few million. Fair. I, I wouldn't <laughs> feel like, when I first did my first B2B talk mm -hmm. to personal trainers, mm. I'd made sure I made money before doing that because nowadays it feels like it's not a criteria <laughs> yeah because I th don't you feel like everything is so like diluted now everything yeah. everyone is like there's so much information everywhere mm -hmm. and everyone thinks now they're qualified because they've heard that information not applied it do you know Massive. what i mean mate that's the clip it's the clip <laughs> clip that clip that <laughs> but yeah, like i think so too right it does feel like that although this conversation has been had all across history i mean even Socrates, I think it's Socrates. Don't quote me. I should really have had this quote pull it up, no, pull fine, it up. But um, you know, it's like it's too much, too much information, not enough knowledge, or too much knowledge, not enough wisdom. Something along those lines. Okay, this is a terrible quote. I'm no, no, that's like, fine. Killing, that's fine. No, I get it. <laughs> killing the quote here. No, but essentially, it. this conversation has been had many, many times. Actually, there was a post recently which was, um, which I saw, which was basically this very conversation we're having across history. In okay. different newspapers, in different, you know, way back, we're talking like 17, 1800s, way back before, obviously, Socrates is way before that as well. Yeah. So it's like very, very old, but common and constant where we somehow, maybe it's like a human thing, but somehow we have this thing where we're so hungry for knowledge. Mm. But I don't think that knowledge becomes wisdom until it's been applied, as you're saying. Mm. And so you can't really like integrate it and fully process it until you go through the shit of applying it yeah that's when i think you can be a coach yes. right 100%. but nowadays it's almost like people are or well, nowadays <laughs> all days yeah. it feels like people often use the process of just taking the information and then reteaching it yeah and it's through that process that they then say that they're <clears throat> a coach does that make sense yeah it does uh, it's weird isn't it? it's an energy thing you can pick it up with someone like the way they walk into a room depending on what yeah. room it is, you, you pick it up, you're like, whatever it is, he knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Right? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's true. like, and then someone else walks in, you're like, hmm, he hasn't done this before. Mm -mm -mm. And you, you kind of feel it. Maybe not everyone feels it, I guess, but like it's, does it, does it frustrate you that the world is like, becomes like that? Or maybe it's because like, we're getting older. Like I first met you when I was 25. How old are you now? 40. 30. <laughs> <laughs> Mad. Don't forget, yeah. Turks. I'm way older. Yeah, Turks, yeah. We might look really old when we're like 14, 15 and have a beard, but we age well. You do age well. <laughs> yes. Depends, actually. It depends. But um, how old are you again now? 36. 36 in July. <clears throat> old families. I'm on the other old, side You're now. On the other side, yeah. on the other side of 30s. Do you feel like stuff like this is frustrating you now more? Does it frustrate <gasps> you? Does it stress no, you No, because out? you know what? Now I look back on it and I go, I get it. I get that thing. It's like, I get that many young people want, to, I mean, they're under different pressures, Darren. Mm. I mean, we were under similar pressures, yeah. but like as social media gets more and more a part of our lives, what's happening is that this pressure to be knowledgeable, this pressure to be confident and know everything about your craft is so much harder than what it was. Like when I worked in a gym, I mean, you and I have both done yeah. many hours on many. the floor, fitness yeah. first, done our time, <laughs> call it. Yeah. And we worked amongst personal trainers who were, I mean, I definitely worked amongst personal trainers who were just, had been there for many, many years. Yeah. And, but it was a group of probably about 20 other trainers that were very, very good at their job. They'd done the time before me. And so the only time that I felt really insecure was when I was at work on the floor, kind of being like, oh gosh, like these guys know so much. Oh my gosh. And so that was confronting. Nowadays, it's 24 seven fam. You open your phone and literally everyone yeah. is better than you because yeah. that's what Obviously, that's the idea of social media is to present yourself in a way that always looks like you're amazing and doing the best and doing so well. And so if you're always consuming that and you never get a break from it day in, day out, how, how do you manage that? Oh, you pretend that you know more than you do. Yeah. And so yeah. I feel like, yes, it's frustrating because obviously that's going to be 
dangerous for some people, and I'm sure we'll go into it. Yeah. When we talk about all the stuff that's online now, <laughs> but 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 basically, I think that there's also an element of like understanding that I feel like I have, or like compassion that I feel like I have for people because I didn't have to go through that mm. in the same way. Yeah. We had other struggles, though, right? We had like, other struggles, I yeah, guess, that are different and that give us a confidence <clears throat> that those people probably won't have unless they put themselves in that situation. Which is yeah. why both you and I are like get on the floor. Yeah, understand what it is to work with people before you decide to just be an online coach. Yeah, because I'm like. Obviously, we had our struggles. You had your own struggle. I had my own struggle. People, the younger kids or whatever, they have their own struggles. But it always made me feel like my struggles were very small when I compared my struggles to, say, my parents or someone else. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, so like, when I think about that, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm living a good life. Like, it's all good. And maybe people don't do that enough. So it's, Mm. so I wonder, like, I wonder, like, like where it's going to go. And I think it's kind of scary. And I'm in my head, I'm like, I'm going to build like a nice home in my dad's village in the mountains and shit. (sighs) Every summer when I have kids, I'm sending them there. Making them work the field. 100%. (laughs) You don't even know how to work the field. 100 I work differently though. (laughs) I work the field of council estates <laughs> in London. <laughs> so, like, I had some struggle. There, there's, no, no, you had struggle. Like, I'm not the struggle, but I know? love that you're yeah. going to be like, pick those olives. Yeah. And- <laughs> pick those fucking olives. Because <laughs> when you come home to my big ass yard, when, which I'll have one day. Yes. They need to know. Like, they need to know, like, oh, shit, okay. Because then, in my head, I'm thinking, like, when I have kids one day, mm. and the way, like, the youth at the minute, the way they're going, it's just like becoming like weak specimens. So like if you build like, if you're smart about it and you have a kid and you like build a strong foundation of like a resilient mindset, which the parent I think is in control of. Yeah, yeah. Then they're just going to be like, it's going to come to world domination. Watch this clip in 30 years time here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. my yeah, kid's yeah, the yeah. next top athlete or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Because it's just that, because everything, who we are, it, the foundation is built by your mom or your dad. Well, you say this, but it's also built by the environment. Okay, it's also yeah. built by your social connections and the yeah. people around you. And this is where it is somewhat, it's not problematic. It's always been that way. But it's like, if you strongly disagree with the direction that society is moving in, mm-hmm. it can be difficult as a parent, right, to be like, how do I manage that given mm. that my child is going to be influenced in some way by that thing, right? Yeah. So it's like, yes, you're right. I think like definitely what you're saying around, I talk about this actually. <clears throat> I'm like, how do I, I had, you know, we talk about the struggle, yeah. and the struggles we had and how now we've managed to, I think anyway, alchemize them into something that's actually become our strength. Mm. Right. So it's like all the struggles that you went through have in some way created a power endearing Mm -hmm. that you use every day when you create content when you go out there that's like your inner kind of fire right okay same for me and I think sometimes I'm like okay well yes I have this goal to like make a lot of money have a nice house create a beautiful home for my family um, and for my kids and provide for them not in a way that I didn't have because my parents did provide for me in a really beautiful way but but also I want to like obviously each level each each generation you want to go exactly so I think to myself, I'm like, well, where's the resilience going to come from? Mm. I need some adversity. And so I'm like, okay, maybe every Friday night I could like pretend to get a bit rowdy, <laughs> pretend to have a few drinks. No, yeah. no but like, do you, don't you feel like, <laughs> yeah, I know it's not you. you know it's I'm not saying. you. You know but what like, I'm you saying. have to create it. You're like, how do we, how do we create the adversity? If we're aiming for a great life for our kids, how do we create the adversity? And then I think um, society and life and the environment that we live in and the way and the rate at which it's changing is going to create enough adversity. Yeah. So it's more about like, what are you establishing at home? And this is what I think you were saying is like, you're like, how do I create a good space, an yeah. open space for my kids because all the shit around it is going to come. Yeah. No I, no, I completely understand. And I think, I guess that's why, like, I want complete financial freedom mm. so I can create that world for them. Mm-hmm. Not by manipulating them, but in a way they don't even know. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I think that's important. Yeah. So when, you know, when, like, parents are like, no, the kid has to choose their self. I'm talking like I'm already a father. I'm not. Not that I know of. But, but like, <laughs> but like, 
they, like people talk like, no, the, the kid is their own person. Yes, I completely understand. They need to make their own choices. Yes, I completely understand. But like, they're your responsibility. So, yeah, your like, responsibility. Yeah. So there's there's an element of you might have to sacrifice upsetting them with certain things and not allow them to do certain things to make sure they have a better life moving forward and not suffer long term mm. that you have to create. And I guess that's why financial freedom is like 100% when I have kids and maybe one day if I ever get married, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> I will, I'm flying business. They can sit in fucking economy. What? They can sit in fucking economy. You're going to make them do economy? 1,000%. One thousand percent, and they can learn. Not as a baby, end up as a baby. They don't know, but once they're old enough, yo, safe. Me and mum's here chilling. What if they get a job and pay the difference? Boom. Then, and that's how they will go. That's what they will think about. Get you it. just said you just thought of that from what I said, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's how a child, like someone else, would should think. Mm, that's what you want them to be. You exactly. want them to be thinking in terms of like you just like solve the it? problem in your head, right? <laughs> you just did it. That's like perfect example. So, like, you'd hope yeah. they do the same. And if they don't, then you might be like, hmm, this one ain't like that, you know. <laughs> this one's a bit weak. This one, like… They're going to learn through example. Yeah, yeah. You should, like… What are you saying? What is this hair mover? You should leave? Like, <laughs> chuck them in the woods for a bit. <laughs> go learn something go and come some back. pick some olives. Yeah, pick some olives. Something. Yeah, some element it. of struggle. Something. Got it. And everyone's yeah. going to be like, nah, you… And this has happened. Paula Lima's told me this. My other friends have told me this. Watch when you have a kid. Yeah. You won't say that when it's a piece of you and blah, blah, blah. I get that. And maybe you can tell me if I'm wrong in this. Or maybe you can tell me how you would be in a sense of... But don't you think like short-term pain for like a long-term... Massively. Right? It's more important, right? But I do think... That men underestimate the power of their little girl looking back up at them. Okay, that's you know what? It's mad. I actually always think of a boy when I think. Of I know a child. you do because you think about little Darren. You yeah. think about like your inner child because it's the only way that we can relate mm. to this idea of parenting when we don't have kids yet, right? Mm. But it's like <clears throat> I often think about just you know heterosexual men <laughs> having to look at their little baby girl yeah. and be like. Oh, yeah. no. They become more primal in it. They're like, no. Yes, super primal. But also, how do you grapple with, like, look, how do I put this in a way that's like not going to, you know. This is going excited. I know, sorry. Okay, that's here we fine. go. So it's like, I just am so curious as to how heterosexual men grapple with and manage the lessons um, or their past experiences in the way that they may have previously treated or engaged with women i'm mm. not talking about like extreme levels yeah, yeah rape or anything like that i'm more talking about even just the way you might be what are you sweating now fam no i like this you i like sweating? this i'm so comfortable with these topics i'm so comfortable i love these chats <laughs> i'm in their class it's just yeah i'm can't... so comfortable <laughs> no i'm right. not right zoom in <laughs> show her <laughs> i don't sweat yeah, this is a sweat just a sweat <laughs> yeah fair so anyway it's like how do men grapple with that because i and then and then have a daughter and like what does that do you should actually ask paul i will i will but you know what's mad you know what okay why do you think then men are like that with their little girl because they know that what is going on inside a guy's head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. What things they're trying to manage all the time. There yes. is a lo- okay, so, so here's my. Um, there is actually a podcast out <clears throat> um, that I listened to a little while ago. Now, so I can't remember, and this is terrible that I can't quote it. So I'm really sorry about this. But um, maybe we can put it in the show notes. Yes. Have you got show notes, man? Oh, uh, we'll sort it out. All I'll right. Okay. It. We're gonna link it. I'll plug them. We're gonna figure out a way. But basically, um, essentially, there's. From what I understand, so I'm I'm woman splaining right now. So you can tell me if this is accurate or if I'm way off. Okay. But particularly for heterosexual men, but not even just heterosexual, actually, just male in general, managing a level of testosterone mm. in their body at all times that is much greater than most women. Mm-hmm. Even women that are like, I've got really high test, really big muscles. I'm like, yes, you do. But comparatively, a female body will just not have the same level. If we talk about, if we can just, for the sake of this podcast, talk in general terms here. So yeah, I yes. know there's outliers, 
but let's say there's a normal distribution, okay? And so I, whenever I talk, I'm going to talk in, in, in this Majority. normal distribution, yeah, yeah. not in the standard deviations along the side. Okay. So in terms of most of the males going through a male experience, there is a level of test that they're managing and that is having implications not just on their body, their mm. muscle mass and various different things, but also this biological drive that they're experiencing at all times. So here's my kind of thing is that society and the way that we have evolved and what we decide is much more evolved and, and progressive is actually about really suppressing a lot of that evolutionary drive. And so if you're constantly managing that, that's a bit of like brain Mind activity. Fuck. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's a bit of like bandwidth going on where you're constantly having to manage these potential, <clears throat> let's just say sexual cues that come in mm. and you kind of like have to use bandwidth to like push that back and be like, no, no, that person is a human being. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to talk to them. And I'm going to, but it's, but it's there. And some people have diff varying levels and obviously the way that they were raised and the society they were raised in and different experiences, cultures all influence how well they manage that bandwidth or how much that bandwidth is intense for them. Okay. So then when you have a baby girl and you know what other men are like or what other men are managing, or even just what you yourself have experienced, how do you like... What are you doing with that information? It's hard because, okay, let's say like my parents' generation, my dad, his mm -hmm. brothers and all that, all like Turkish men, protective, provide, all of that. Yep. They don't know how to manage those emotions. Right. So potentially someone could get hurt from that. Mm. So when I mean hurt, like the kids could get hurt from that if not managed properly, whether it's domestic violence, whatever, whatever it is. Right. They don't know how to handle those emotions because when you talk about majority of those countries mm. um, they're still in that very old school way of like evolutionary like yeah lifestyle. super primal super primal animal whatever you want to call it I yeah. guess so there's no like there's no anxiety in those countries <laughs> there's no such thing like not to the, yeah, there's like what is that degrees. feeling yeah. like there isn't that you can't they don't really attach those emotions to that it's like interesting yeah because they're not educated on that Obviously, anxiety is a thing. I'm not saying it's not a thing. Yes. But like, but in, not in the same way that it manifests in cultures no. where we have like changed the no. rules a bit. 100%. If I'd asked my mum, if I told my mum explain anxiety or my dad That's or my grandparents, if I explained, they wouldn't get it. I, I can assure you they wouldn't get it. They'll be like, yeah, so like wow. sometimes you feel good, sometimes you feel bad. Yeah. No problem. That's interesting. <laughs> so that it, it would be hard for them to acknowledge because... And probably because they, they're a lot more resilient than we are. Mm. Like, so like, I don't know, like my mom, for example, she was born in a village. She moved to the city of Istanbul. She was technically a squatter. She literally, they picked a piece of land and built a house in Istanbul. <laughs> like, literally. So like, and then That's she it. paid for a whole family when she worked in Istanbul. And then slowly all her brothers and sisters came yeah, into Istanbul. Yeah, similar to my mom. And then PG the parents came, yeah, like slowly. Mm -hmm. And then, so like, there's like that mental resilience where all of that anxiety, this depression, I don't know, whatever it is, is very like instantly blocked out because it doesn't really exist. No, Bam, Do you're you know trying what I mean? To you're trying to survive. And I think that if you're constantly concerned about survival, there's no time to have the things that maybe anxiety comes from these days, right? And yeah. the anxiety that we have, we have status anxiety, we have anxiety that relates to like so many different elements that aren't so much, they're still at, at their core, they're still related to survival, but <clears throat> they're also related to so many other things that are like way more I don't want to say that they're more complex, but they're just different to the way that your family, my family, the struggles that they had, many yeah. other people. And still to this day, it's not like yeah. these things aren't still happening. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? I think, I feel like, like with my dad and, or like, obviously I'm speaking from my experience of what I've seen, right? So that's why yeah. I refer to my family background or people that I've seen. Yeah. There's no, or even if it's where I'm raised, where there's just Africans, Jamaicans, yes. uh, Polish, Lithuanian, whatever. It's yeah. like, what I saw, what I see the biggest difference in like, say, areas like where we are now, Fulham or whatever, mm -hmm. compared to like where I was raised or those backgrounds is like, no one cared about being accepted. It's just like they are. 
They just are. That's interesting. And like here, I feel like everyone is doing everything to be accepted or seen or to fit in. So why do you think that? Is that because our connections? Sorry, back. Yes. So, But is that here you're saying people are trying to survive here or as in? Just in general more now, like in society, in the sense of like they're doing stuff to be accepted. To be accepted. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So like this has to do with. Um, okay, can I bring up a study? Of course. The, do what you the, Treat this like it's your podcast show. Okay, now. so there's a study that's going on that's been going on since 1938. Longest study ever, um, I think, to this, to, to this day. But um, it's called the, adult, the Harvard Study of Adult Development. And basically, they wanted to find out, their aim was to find out, like, what constitutes, what creates a healthy, happy life. And so they looked at the lives of different metrics, 750 just or 700 something, over 700 men, their spouses, and then their children. So this has like been ongoing. Oh, 1938, snap. it's like super long, That's pretty right? Cool. Yeah. To, so it, And it's a longitudinal study, which means it's like being studied over time. And so basically what they found is that one of the biggest indicators of predictors of health is actually – not exercise. It's not whether you smoke too much or drink too much or don't do those things. It's actually the quality of your relationships. Interesting. Yeah. And so even when they account for smoking, alcohol, drug taking, all of those things, even when they they account for that, right, it's still demonstrating that relationships have the most profound effect on us. Interesting. It is. That's- so there are, and, and I'm saying, they have physiological implications, not just psychological. And so it's mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, I'm really sad. It's like, yeah, if you're really sad, it's going to have an effect on your body physiologically. So they know that relationships have some kind of isolated effect on our experience as humans. And I talked about this recently in a talk. Um, there's another, there's a theory called social pain overlap theory, which is basically looking at the fact that we experience and process pain physical pain in the same place that we experience and process social exclusion. <laughs> right, Ben, that's what my face did. It's wild to think that taking your hand away from a hot stove is the same level of importance as making sure that your friends don't exclude you or that you're not bullied or that you're not um, alone and isolated forever. And so if you think back to what you're saying, where this anxiety is forming in our society, particularly here, here in Fulham, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wherever, yeah. shout out to Fulham. Anywhere with money, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anywhere with more money and like not such a struggle for survival, yeah. let's just say, because maybe that struggle for survival, we don't know, maybe it creates a bond that's automatic where you're not, you don't have time to think about, yeah. do you accept me for the shirt I'm wearing? And it's more about like, fuck, let's get through today. And we'll Mm. get through it by this kind of connection that we have. However, here, if that doesn't exist, why why are we connected? What Mm. are we bonding over? Yeah. Truly, what are we bonding over? Yeah. Well, if you think about it, back in the day when people needed to survive, they needed community and connection. Mm -hmm. They need help from each other. Fam, that's not back in the day. That is still today. It's still happening. But what happens is when there's financial freedom, I don't need you, bruv. Yeah. I don't need you. Dude. But you do, but then you lack that connection, yes. and then you realize how fucking sad you are, which is why, like, that's what happens. Which is what happens. And, and then, why do you think so many like millionaires, billionaires, they're fucking lonely? Yeah. Like, my grandparents, my grandma, she's like 96, 97 right now. She's she's slowly going, but like every day, there's a grandchild. Every day, there's mm-hmm. a different grandchild <laughs> going to visit. That is what's keeping her alive, though. <laughs> Yeah. That's what's keeping her alive. Big time. So when there's like an old woman that's 70 years old or whatever, locked down in COVID and her kids don't give a fucking shit or they've moved away from home mm-hmm. and they didn't, they don't have offsprings like, they, like and there's no one there to go visit. Yeah. Of course she's going to die younger. She's lonely. Yeah. And that loneliness has like really strong physi- physiological implications. Yeah. And so it's something that like, I think... Is, so you asked me like before, what is the thing that irritates me now? Like, yeah. what is that thing? You know, is it, is it that people are pretending to be coaches or whatever when they don't have experience? I don't care about that as much. The thing I care that, that I do get upset about that I think is problematic that I've really grappled with and I've tried to understand, like, is this something just because I'm Australian and so I have this like tall poppy syndrome running through my mind? But there's this other part of me that thinks if we're constantly trying to 
flex mm. on the money that we have, on the things. Yeah. We are ultimately shaping the way that society has or has its values, mm. right? And so, for example, if your Instagram feed is, and I say yours as in like just generally speaking, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. If it's filled with people like constantly, constantly flexing mm. on the money that they have, the status that they have, whatever, then you're going to start to think, okay, this is what success looks like to society. Mm -hmm. But we know that that doesn't demonstrate anything. It doesn't demonstrate the quality of their relationships. Even if they're posting pictures of being with friends, it's not really demonstrating the quality of relationships. In fact, I've been to so many things where it's just, I mean, I've been to like dinners back home where it's just people going to dinner, taking photos of being at dinner, but actually spending the whole time going back and forth to the bathroom so they can take drugs. And I'm like, no one's eating. <laughs> I'm just there. Yeah, no, in it. And I get it. I get that. Like, maybe you want to do that, and that's like fun for you and whatever. But it's like the problem is is not doing that. If that's that's your jam. That's your jam. But the problem is is that then the posting oh, of the them. pictures they're later. Losers, bruv. They're losers. <laughs> no, no, no. They are. They're losers. I'm sorry. Can't. You can't say that. I'll say it. You're losers. <laughs> if you're going to the toilet every single time to rack up a line, you're a loser, bruv. You're a loser. I don't Do you care. Know, you can't. Yeah, but you can't say that because they're just. Maybe they're trying to process their own shit, right? Yeah, they're numbing the conversation that they need to totally, have. Totally, but so that's the process that they have to go through. <laughs> <laughs> what, Shona? It's true, though. No one, no one says this. You drink too much, you need to address it. You take too much drugs, 100, 100 you need to address it. I believe that. I agree with that. So Shona's been very professional, very, very but polite and very listen, empathetic. it's not... Yeah, I'm just not going to call someone a loser because... Okay, you never really went down that path. Okay. Right, you Correct. never really went down that path. So, um, sorry, I did cut you off. There. I just got no, nah, fam, oh, it's sorry. fine. This is I'm sorry, mate. Treat it like it's your podcast. <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> so anyway, anyway, basically, <laughs> what I'm saying is the problem is is that then so there's pictures of so what's your feed full of? It's full of wealthy stuff, wealthy flexing. Even though maybe you know someone had to take out a loan to buy that bag or whatever, you don't yeah. know. Oh. Maybe it's flexing on the friendships that you have, but we don't know the context of those friendships. And then you're flexing on various different things so someone looking in on that content oh shit did i shit my teeth no no you're good well you i think i did no no you look good it's calm Don't no worry. zooming in <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. so anyway basically you're making these interpretations that are going to impact the value shift in society and now i see young kids striving to do those things yeah. and not striving to have quality relationships. Yeah. This is a huge problem. Same with fitness, man. Yeah. If we can talk all we want about like all the things that we should be doing for our fitness. Get enough protein, drink enough water, make sure you fucking take your creatine, do this, yeah. train, blah, 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 have rest days. I'm like, yeah, what about relationships? You know what's mad? The only reason I was a top dog and had back-to-backs in the fucking gym is because… Genetics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Genetically, probably more happier than no, no, other sorry. people. Yeah, yeah. But like, from the communication and relationship I had with my clients, I think so too. And they were getting results because they were getting a connection with me that they weren't getting at home, which is why ninety percent of them, ninety five, ninety nine percent of them were female, woman. How have you identified yourself? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Legit. Yeah. Because they would come and talk to me about their partners. Can we just touch on this female thing? Because I just want to, I just want to say, because I know that like, if you have any women that are watching your content, yeah, that are feminist, yeah, love it. We love it. We're here for it. But the thing that I feel like maybe, well, maybe it's, it's not to say that they don't understand. Know. I'm not pointing <laughs> at you. No, no, I'm pointing at the the problem. Yeah. What I think is I've perceived as a problem. Just in defense of anyone that uses the term female, it's not because they're trying to dehumanize women. Can I just say that yeah, in this please. space? Yeah, please. Thank you. I've got in trouble for this. <laughs> I know. And like I say, but but I say it, other, other women, you know, other incredible women in the industry say it. We say female because what, what's happening is that we're used to reading papers, right? So we're reading papers about various different things to do with um, you know, the physiology. And I, that's what you, ideally, you know, you do want your trainer to have an understanding of that stuff. And so th we often get used to conversing in a way that's like females mm. because biologically there are some very 
strong differences and some differences that need to be accounted for. So in the running mind of a general everyday PT, it might be that then, or anyone, um, they might be thinking in terms of like male, female. So I know when you say female, yeah. that you're not thinking. Comes from a good place. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. coming from a place. It's it's actually an embracing of those biological differences. It's not dehumanizing. It's not saying like, oh, females. So I just really want to, I mean, some people do that, but I, ju yeah. I just really want to clarify that because it like, it. <laughs> whenever I read those comments where they're like coming yeah. at you for saying, can yeah. you not call us females? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I, he really doesn't mean to do it in that way. And then now also you, it's hard because you are wanting to be inclusive and diversify your language. Yeah. Do you say women? I say, honestly, Shona, like. Because Let's, sometimes it's people. It's people, yeah, exactly. Pregnant people. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's making sure that you're like being inclusive there. So sometimes when you have to establish that you are strictly talking yeah. about women, yeah. sometimes it feels safer to say yeah. female. This isn't an excuse, but because no. my first language is Turkish, sometimes I say words in my head in English that make yeah. more sense in Turkish, which is why... Like I'm technically dyslexic or whatever or idiot, but like mm -hmm. I actually think it's because I'm bilingual, so I don't fully like mm, when I read something, I can't read. I, I read a page and I won't get it, and I have to read again. That's interesting. So like, but anything visual communication, whatever, I'm good. Yeah. You know, so like sometimes when I'm explaining something, Oops, sorry, that's fine. Came out. So, sometimes when I'm explaining something, I struggle to articulate exactly what's going through my mind. Then I spit it so fast in case I forget that thought. Got it. <clears throat> so then sometimes really interesting. I can get misunderstood sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the people that know me know my intention from my from my face, my mouth, my body language. Yeah. They know. Smart people know. But also I think like there's something to be said for misinterpretation. Like let's, I hate the word normalize, but let's normalize the um, the idea of being misinterpreted. Like that's where communication grows. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I think this is something that I'm like really passionate about. I was asked the other day, like, what are some tips that you have for improving relationships? And so, um, you know, I gave like the general ones, like learn about attachment theory, learn about this, this and that. But then one of the biggest ones that I think has really helped me is um, jealousy. Mm. So jealousy, I think, actually is something that is so taboo in our society. And we are very good at trying to either push it down, yeah, not accept it. Some cultures, I would say like, Latino cultures are very yeah. much about like it's cultural to like bring it up and talk it out and express it. Muslim cultures too. Muslim cultures Muslim too. Muslim cultures. Okay, so like various different cultures are very much about like bringing this out and wearing it and owning it. And I think there's an element of that that's really awesome to not make it so taboo. But I also think there's something powerful about jealousy that helps to shine a light on areas in yourself that maybe need some some work or some like some healing or some, you know what I mean? So what did you say? Improvement. Improvement, maybe. But Improvement. it's like jealousy is a very natural primal <clears throat> experience. Evolution favoured people who had high, particularly favoured females, <laughs> 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 women <laughs> with higher levels of jealousy because that helped to retain a mate that was like protective of mate guarding. So actually when you have that moment where you experience jealousy, even if it's just jealousy of a friend, it doesn't have to be romantic partnerships. But if you just spend a bit of time letting it come to the surface rather than trying to distract yourself or trying to find other ways to mitigate it or pretend it doesn't exist, let it come to the surface, journal on it, and then go to the person that you felt jealous of, mm -hmm. if you can, if you have access to do that. If you don't, then just journaling is fine. But I think like if I have an experience where I feel jealous of you, in something right rather than sitting there and pretending and trying to flex on something else or belittle your success in yeah. some way and be like yeah he's successful but he's a dick actually what would be better is to actually come to you and be like Tyrion, this is so funny i felt so jealous of you the other day this happened um i i processed it a bit but like i just wanted to share it with you because i thought it was funny or i thought it was something we could talk about you're gonna come to me and be like I feel so much closer to that person because they were 100%. vulnerable enough to say that. 100%. It brings us closer together. And yet we spend our lives trying to avoid jealousy, trying to disconnect from it. In a partnership, a romantic partnership, if you say to your partner, <laughs> I was really jealous when I saw that girl walk past you, like, oh, did you look? And how do you feel about it? And you can say, like, if you're honest in your relationship, you might go, I did look and she is hot. A anyone I that I date, I'm open about it. I'm not going to lie. Totally. I'm open about it. I'll be like, 
I'm not going to lie. Like, I love those pair of shorts, but like half your bum is sticking out. Like your bum cheek is out. So like when a guy, I'm, <laughs> when a guy turns around and whistles at you when you're walking down the street, mm-hmm. I'm not saying you're asking for it. Yes. I'm not saying what, that. No. But just know that men can be very fucking, that comes back to what you were saying earlier. Exactly. And they will, they call it cat call. What do they call it? Cat, cat calling? Yeah, yeah cat calling. They will say something. Yeah. So, and I'm me, personally, as someone that is like dating you or seeing you or whatever, yep. I personally don't like it. Yes. I don't, I don't like it. How could, how could I? Okay, let's work on Do you know let's, what I mean? Can we break this down though? Let's do No, break work. it down now. Right, 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 right. So, okay, let's say it was sitting in like some couples therapy and jealousy was coming yeah, up yeah. a lot and you were like, <laughs> I don't like it when you wear those shorts, fam. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is my accent good? Oh, shit. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's getting there. <laughs> it's getting there. <laughs> I'm on the spot now. Okay. So, I need to watch more Top Boy and figure it out. <laughs> um, okay, so when, why don't you like it? I'm curious. Anyway, mm. this isn't even a therapy session. I'm just like curious. Why don't you like I know the, what's going through his head. Okay, and how does that, and what is wrong with that? Because some guys. Because they're sexualizing, they're sexualizing a person that I'm very connected to. Okay, and so you don't, is and the I only reason like you it. don't like it, because, can we get to deeper about why you don't like it? Because some guys like it, right? Yeah, I'd know about them guys. Because I've been asked a few times. <laughs> really? To I've come been watch. asked. Yeah, but you can't, don't kink shame. Maybe there's some, no, maybe not, there's some I'm guys not, I'm that not, like, but like the... see, that. See, that to me does not go in line with my, <laughs> my, my, my values. It doesn't go in line. That's like, fair enough. All right, so I can't, I can't do that. I can't watch another brother do a ting to my girl. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I know you guys are out there and that's cool. <laughs> I'm happy for you lot. Not you, not you. I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy for you lot, innit? Yes. But like, Cuff if my bloodline never found that out, <laughs> it's game over. Like back not... in tribal days in the village, if that yeah. happened, you're getting speared in the chest. Yes, but it was happening. It, like, <laughs> but it just you just didn't know about. But like, yeah, maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe. Just covertly, just, yeah, yeah, very differently. It's very different to be like welcoming it in and yeah. going, "I'm ready to watch." Yeah, yeah. Do your thing, but some, yeah. So some people do do feel it. So I'm just trying to get to the bottom of you personally mm. and many mm. other people. Yeah. Like, what is the feeling? Is it because, like, because here, this is where sometimes it can go. Sometimes it can go to a place of ownership, right? It's like, mm. you're like, well, I own that level of intimacy with my partner. Mm. That's mine. And when we enter into an agreement, and if I'm not seeing other people, we're entering into this monogamous agreement, mm. there's a level of, like, I don't Connection. want you to have other social, sorry, other sexual yes. experiences, yeah, even if they're not finished yeah. but they're like they're like experienced right yeah and so i think that's the part that gets tricky right is like we have to be clear about the boundaries of our own mm. what are you smiling about i'm smiling at because i'm can i say it yeah you, i'm smiling because i think i know what most men think but i don't think they have the chest to say it oh bring it fam i i i, I think like they want to say, yo, I hate it. I hate it. Why? Why? Like, I hate, I don't like it. I don't want you snogging some other guy, bruv. Yes. I, I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it. It depends how much I've known them and how, where it's going. Yep. I'm, okay, I'm not going to meet someone and be like, immediately, <laughs> on the first day. immediately jealous. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But, but like, over time, over time, few months, whatever growing. it is, you're slowly building connection. It naturally happens anyway. Yes. But I would prefer to address something I'm not comfortable with yes. so they know who I am, so I'm accepted with who I am. So, yes. Instead of potentially rejected later on. Because then I have to accept... Because if you're falling in love or whatever you're doing, right, mm. it should be for accepting that person, mm. right? Mm. So, like, maybe some things that you didn't um, maybe calculate before and now you're in love or whatever you have to like, you're thinking about those things and maybe you didn't like that thing in the past or whatever it is, but then you have to like almost check yourself and be like, no, no, that was a different time. Yeah. You need to realign your values and where you were at at that moment and then moving forward with whatever relationship or whether it's with that person or someone else, you become better at that communication because it is tough conversations. Je- the to- jealousy is hard, is a hard conversation. All of it, I guess. All of it is, but yes. Be those vulnerable sorts of things, as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 
But that's why I say we can't shy away from those levels of vulnerability. Yeah. And, and also I think like people are often unwilling to even face those emotions in themselves. This is what I'm saying. Jealousy can be this very uncomfortable experience and we try to push it down in various different yeah. ways. Sometimes it's, we do it in toxic ways where we might be like, if you've experienced, and this ho- often happens in relationships early on, but it can happen throughout, is that there's this pattern of, okay, I feel jealous that my partner's getting attention, so I'm going to go get attention as well. Yeah. So we have the like yeah, the DM weird. stuff that gets a bit like iffy where it's like both of your partners are like, you know, yeah. can we talk about DMs? Oh, uh, <laughs> no, nah, not DMs. Well, we can. But actually this thing about like liking other girls' pictures. Oh, my God, that's mad. I always like girls' pictures. Yeah. So I, I don't care. understand why it's upsetting. I'm I'm curious if you yeah. – would you be would you be upset if your partner was liking other guys' photos? <laughs> Which is just is just like not the, the same intention. thing for girls. I don't feel it's it's not the same thing because like I don't know. I can't speak for all women personally. Like I'm not a guy that's like got his abs out on Instagram. I've worked with bodies my whole life. It's just not that interesting to me for someone to get abs. Good point. So so what I find more interesting is like their intelligence or their chat or like or any of those things. Good point. Right? Whereas we see a pair of tits. There's something nice that's happening. Glutes, instantly. Glutes, boobs, whatever it might be, eye, long eyelashes, hair extensions, whatever it is, right? It's yeah. like you, there's things that are triggering yeah. your more primal elements. 100%. I'm Those sound, things. You know what? People chop this clip up here. They're going to make me sound like fucking Andrew Tate, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No, they're not. Yeah, if they chop oh the, the titties. I don't the... care. I don't care because like, I'm just me in it. I'm, I'm really like, I'm really comfortable with these conversations because <laughs> I know how I feel and about family and women, <laughs> yes. females, whoever. Yes. Yes. Like, I know truly how I feel and how I am and my approach and respect I give. So I'm not scared of having these conversations. I also think you're also very fluid in your, like, I think this is a really beautiful thing about you is that you're flexible. Like if I presented to you a case or a point, yeah. I don't think that you'd be like, no, nah, hands down, no, nah, shut up. I'm not here for that. Yeah. You would be like, oh, hmm. Yes. Interesting. I'm going to like integrate that and you'll integrate it according to your values. And so I don't think that you're like completely stuck, but I think you still have to be at a point where you express and be comfortable with who you are currently. And if people challenge that, fine, come and challenge it. That's, that's how we learn and grow. Right. hundred percent. And that's what I love about like these conversations mm, because you're learning. A hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? So, so yes. So liking other girls' photos, mm. I, I wish we had another girl here because I would love to like ask her because yeah. I don't personally find it. I understand that as a guy, maybe there's going to be some element of you that's going to find it fun for whatever reason to be like, oh, like. <laughs> Honestly, any girl I've had a problem where I've liked other girls' photos, yes. the girl's usually insecure about themselves. Of course, it comes from a place of that, for sure. It comes from insecurity and feel like they have no power. Powerlessness. Powerlessness is what I've heard, what have I've been told, what I've experienced. And how have you managed it? Have you managed that conversation? Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not together anymore. Uh, um, smoke bomb. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> oh, we're we're out of time. Oh, shit. Right. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. What? Emergency call. Yeah, I'll be there, Smith. <laughs> he's in, he's in, I need to go to Australia. <laughs> All right, um, enough. Uh, if it's someone that I don't see anything happening with long term, mm. then I will address it very quickly and I'll tell them my problem. And if they don't like it, I'll part ways very quickly. Uh, no, no, I'm not talking about you oh. having a problem with them, their behavior. I'm talking about how you manage the conversation when they have a problem with you oh, okay. liking other girls' photos. I would photos. ask. I would ask, like, what do you think's happening? Okay. Oh, that, why, why? I just want to know, like, why? All right, let's role play it then. I'm going to be like, <laughs> why do you like that girl's pick? I won't lie, she was pretty fit. That's super disrespectful. Why? Because, okay, two reasons. Like one reason it makes me feel like you like them more than me. Because sometimes you true. don't, well, what, sometimes you don't like my no, pics. No, hold on, hold on. You're beautiful. Fam, sometimes you don't like my pics. And you like hers. And I don't look like that. Fair. You don't look like that. <laughs> you don't look like that. You look even better. <laughs> this is, okay, are you not trying to like... As if, you know, you can't lie. What if you like? Gave she, in. <laughs> but listen, what if she clearly looks better? 
What better. She clean looks better. Oh, so here's okay. what I want to say. Better is what is better fluid. Show? Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. What is better? Yeah. And this is where we sometimes get into problems, yeah. right? Because actually, what is better um, sexually mm. tantalizing? I recently learned this. Sexually tantalizing to the opposite sex. Let's say very heterosexual or heteronormative this conversation is. But let's just say what looks better and more attractive to the opposite sex mm. is not necessarily that it's not, that your partner's not beautiful. So for example, like, you know, flat chested, no booty, like just a person, right? Still beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Versus, let's say, all the beauty stuff that women feel pressured to do. Yeah. Boobs, lashes, extensions, Botox, whatever it might be, right? Like so let's say that. the extreme. So so then yeah. I, what I want to understand is like, you say you don't like it, but, the, but if, yeah. but there's must be an element of like something that attracts me to it that attracts you to it so is it just purely sexual it would be purely sexual okay it would be purely sexual it would be purely sexual i think depends yeah and if you spend enough time with that person you see something else totally so it's different but whereas personally what i would be very attracted to yeah straight up yeah is a woman Totally. And so like, and in their rawness of whatever that expresses as, whether it's flat chested, whether it's big breasted, whether it's like whatever. And we all have our own like kind of preferences and yes. that's fine. Yeah. But I, I'm so, the thing that I'm trying to like, I guess, get to is that there's these really like, there's all these pressures that as women, we feel that there are, but I feel like a lot of the time, and I'm not talking about aging because I understand the, the desire for Botox to sort of like prevent the aging yeah. process. But in terms of like when it gets really extreme and there feels this pressure of like appealing to, I'm like, what are we trying to appeal to? It's, it's a hard one. You can't you can't one. talk because all, the ways. reason I'm talk, the reason I'm asking you is because I'm yeah. I'm trying to get the male perspective of like yeah. what is the difference between how you might see that person and like why you might like that photo of yeah. that girl, yeah, versus. And it's not to say that girl isn't beautiful as well. Yeah. She obviously is, but it's just it's just different. For it's me, like, sometimes like there's a lot of pictures of you online mm -hmm. where you got bikini, short mm -hmm. shorts, where you look great. Mm -hmm. Like I like them all the time. Yeah. And we're cool. And yeah. I really like you. You're wicked. Yeah. I've known you for years. Mm -hmm. So like I can like that without even thinking without anything, anything sexual or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah. So when like if someone was to ask me, like, why are you liking showing those pictures? Yeah. I'd be like, what? Hold on. She's my friend. She's, She's I like, whatever. I like Lucy Lords. I like this person. I like yes. that person. Oh, that person's new. She's, I don't know. She's, she just followed me. She's been on TV. She's showing me love. I'm showing it back. It's mm. all good. Like, I don't care. Whatever. I'm not doing anything. Like, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That's how, that's the angle that I would go. And that is the angle that I play majority of the time because I generally don't care. Because if I wanted to do something, I will do it. You can't stop me. No, you can't stop me. You mean me. if you wanted to like the picture? Anything. Or anything. You can't, no one can stop you from doing what you want to do. So like no. the intention, so th that's another problem. So like if I wanted to go out of my way to do something, there's going to be a way of doing it. You've been in relationships. I've then. been in relationships. Yeah, 100%. Okay, so, to, so, in, so. Well, I feel like I'm getting interviewed now. This is great. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, sorry, yeah, yeah. No, sorry. this is great. I, I just, it's something that it's, I'm really so curious about in terms of like, just because I really see that there's a problem in the heterosexual community. Okay. With relationships. Okay. Okay. We know that like, there's a problem because men often cheat. Yeah. Okay. And more often than not, it could just be my echo chamber, but broad speaking, I've met a lot of men that- I've met one, more women. That cheat? I've met a lot of women that cheat. Okay. I've met Do you think men and women cheat for different reasons? This is going to be controversial because I know there's a lot of women <laughs> out there that, yeah, there's a lot of women that are out there that are like, no, like we don't, we cheat because we, you know, that like the women want sex too. And I, I definitely think that there's definitely those women, Gen I've cheated before and I've been cheated on. And I can say, and I know that there will be women out there that relate to me. I know that not all women feel this way. So I'm not trying to diminish sexual exploration, sexual progressiveness. This is just a conversation. It's yeah, I'm just speaking from my experience. So I just really want to establish that because I'm here for sexual progression in women. I'm yeah, here yeah. for them to like push the boundaries to understand who they are and to not feel confined to this kind of like, you know, innocent maiden 
thing yeah, yeah. or the Madonna which or no anything like that. Huh? Which no one is. Sorry. Yeah, or like maybe that exactly. And then even if you think you are and then you have this other side of you and then it creates all these problems because you don't you're in, you internalize and you sexually repress. So I am not trying to perpetuate that in any way. I know, however, that the reason that I cheated was because I was feeling a lack of, and this is not blaming the partner, but I felt a lack of connection to them intellectually, emotionally, that... You weren't happy. Yeah. I don't know that all men cheat because they're not happy. I I can assure you now, I've spoken to a lot of girls that have cheated, and it's all because they're not happy. Legit. But you guys seem to be able to compartmentalize and like have sex with another woman and still be come home at night and be like, I love my wife and genuinely feel that way. Dicks. I know it sounds fucking stupid, but like it comes back to that primal evolution. Yeah, we were talking about the beginning. It, come, it comes back to that a little bit. Like it does a little bit. I'm, I'm just being like, honestly, it comes back to that. Mm. It comes back to that. And that's what I mean is like, I feel like. I'm not saying I do it. I'm just saying. Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Showing up, like, shut anyway, up. Anyway, uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It, the point I'm trying to make is like, I guess, I guess I'm not even really trying to make a point here. I'm just trying to like bring to the surface some of the stuff that doesn't get really talked about in the context yeah, yeah. of a private relationship. Yeah, yeah. But I would love it to be a normalized conversation that's had because, as I mentioned at the beginning, if there's a drone kind of mm. thing going on there's this thing where you're like constantly suppressing yeah and then we have this system out in the world called monogamy mm -hmm. that means that men in some way in order to fit and women let's just say men and women in order to fit have to abide by these kind of rules yeah but no one talks about what the rules are i think the most important thing and something i'm definitely doing as i've got older mm. with people is that i'm actually talking openly about like what is your idea of monogamy? Is like, that what you mean? No, not just everything. Everything. Got it. Just everything. Everything. Like, just really, really open about all my thoughts and how I feel. And it's just like, accept, not accept, cool. And how does it make you feel then? Scary as like, this is really my. This is really my podcast now. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. I'm, but I really want to understand, right? No, it's so fine, it's, it's like, fine. how does it make you feel then to be when you have been in a monogamous relationship, how do you manage those monogamous rules? Can you clear up what they are for people? Some people Well, don't. this is what I'm saying. People, Can, okay, so monogamy being um, one person at a time. <laughs> Even though back in the day, monogamy used to mean one person for a lifetime because you'd marry once yeah, and you'd be with that be, person yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you'd only have sex with that person. Nowadays, it's evolved and monogamy is just one person at a time. Mm -hmm. And so what does that mean for you? Well, this is the problem. We often don't really talk about that mm -hmm. because monogamy for some people is, okay, just no sexual interactions, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily mean not liking other girls' pics. Oh, shit. But some people, for some people, monogamy is don't like, don't look, don't talk to. Don't live. Yeah, if you Pretty want to call much. it that, exactly. Don't if you want to, just don't do anything that may disrupt <clears throat> this container of monogamy that I've created. Yeah. And so, but the problem is if you don't, if we don't establish, yeah. hey, for me, porn is cheating. Hey, for you, that's not. Mm. You're just whatever. Yeah. And so this is where I think one of the biggest problems is, is that we don't talk about it. And then when we don't talk about it, we don't really understand the other person's perspective. So this is why I'm bringing mm. it to you. I'm saying like, if you have this maybe constant <clears throat> like awareness of other women that yeah. you're attracted to, yeah. And this constant desire maybe. Yeah. And I imagine your DMs are pretty full. And so you would have women being like, hi, how are you going? Like blah, blah, blah. Presenting sex on offer to you yeah. lots of times. Yeah. When you enter into a relationship, what are you <clears throat> doing with all that noise? I think you have to channel your energy into different places. You, what are you channeling you channel, it you channel, you channel it into and you focus it on what's more important. Right. So it's a prioritization, it's a, hierarchical yeah, yeah. situation. A little, I think so. Okay. I think... And this is, by the way, this is something I'm learning as I'm getting. Yeah, older. and that's why I'm just so asking. like I don't want to say it's definite. It's definite. It's not definite. I think every each person is very different. Each relationship is yes, very different. But there'll be patterns. There'll be patterns that so are. This is why I'm trying to get your opinion as a man. Okay. Yeah, I think. Okay, put it like this: I was going to get married once. Yeah. When I was in Australia, um, it didn't happen. I called it. I 
called it off. I didn't want it because I didn't want to live in Australia long term. And there was things that I didn't accomplish in life before I got into a marriage situation mm. as well as, um, it sounds mad, but like I just didn't have enough fun before getting married. And when you say fun, can you be clear? You mean like sexual sexually partners. fun? Sexual partners. Yeah, got it. Sexual partners. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I was getting a lot of attention in the gym mm. and and there was things that I haven't experienced yet that I feel like I had to. Not at the time, when I was young. When you're young. Do you know what I mean? And if anyone listens, to, when they're listening to this and you totally misreading what the hell I'm saying here, you can quite frankly go fuck yourself. <sighs> Because it's just, I'm just being real. Like, this is like a problem I think men actually suffer with of having this conversation of going like, I need to have fun. I need to let go. I need to do this. I need to get certain things out of my system. Not every male. Feels that way. Not every male feels that way. That's interesting. But like some males, usually high tests. Mm. What I've noticed, very driven Mm. individuals tend to have more of this outburst of energy that they need to fulfill before settling down. Yeah. Okay. I think. Okay. I think. Yeah. It's from my experience. But again. We're talking in generals. So we are talking about this like, you know, when you look at statistics, there's always this like normal distribution that happens. Yes. And so we can say that generally speaking, maybe this is the thing. Because I even think that those men that maybe don't go and do the having fun thing yeah. might just be a factor that they have a, um, maybe they have, a certain identity that they're upholding. Like I think some some people have been raised where monogamy was of the highest priority and therefore <clears throat> their their relationship to monogamy might be if I want to consider myself a good person, mm. then I must be a good monogamous man. Mm. And so they may not even understand that there are or feel the connection to that thing going on. Yeah. And they're the ones that end up... <clears throat> End up working <laughs> in the city. Later. End up working in the city in the CBD, <laughs> racking up cocaine every evening and fucking no, prostitutes. I don't. Well, I mean, maybe. Not maybe. I've seen it. I've seen it. I mean, you can't I've say that they're the ones because I would say sometimes they end up having their whole life and then suddenly like something comes crumbling down in their relationship. Or maybe mm. their partner cheats. Yeah, this is the mad thing when people like talk about this perfect world and how perfect they are and how perfect their partner is. I don't believe them. At all. Yeah. I just don't believe him. I'm like, wow, you haven't you haven't had a chat with your missus, bruv. <laughs> I'm like, you haven't had a chat, bruv. You need to have a chat, innit? Like, there's a reason you're drinking so much, brother. <laughs> yes, exactly. So that's You're what, not happy. <laughs> so that's what I mean. So then I'm saying, like, you fully dodged the question. So like what media trained. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really well media trained here. What how do you manage the noise at the same time? You said priorities. Priority. So at the time you're saying that the relationship is more important to you than snacks. Okay. If I'm okay, honestly. Yeah. And I'm not trying to dodge the question. It's a real hard. It's a hard to answer. It is hard to answer. It is hard Welcome to answer. To my podcast. It is hard, yeah. It is hard to answer. And I want to hear you answer this from a, a happy to from a female's perspective. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> yeah. I've never. I've never been driven to get women okay my drive has never been there yep mm-hmm. my drive has never been there and if i'm being honest i think i was always good with women because that works I, in your favor i didn't care yeah it works my in drive your favor. was yeah. other things that somehow actually attracted women yep okay whether it's when i'm communicating with my client like looking into their eyes and paying attention yeah and like talking to them and like seeing them you truly see them. You're not worried about, oh, are they perceiving me in the right way? Blah, blah, blah. And sometimes that is unsexy, right? Whereas like That's if right. you have this element of like, don't really care, you can just be there in your presence connecting exactly. with that person. Because yeah, then what happens attractive. is people date people for a certain amount of time, then they realize, oh, he's not actually like that. It's like, yeah. whereas I'm actually just being. Yeah, okay. Got because it. Because got it. for a long term, I was in a long relationship for a very young age to like yeah. from 17 to like 25. Got it. Which meant I, I wasn't, my mind wasn't there. My mind wasn't there. So I was actually just being. Okay, got it. And then I just continued to be like that. Yep. So I wasn't really trying or I wasn't trying to be away, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. But I was driven with like, I wanted to, I want to be successful. Yes. I want to be successful. Whether that's as a coach, as an online presence, someone to give impact and earn good money to provide for myself and my family. Got it. Okay. And that 
That's been your number one thing. That's been the number one thing. Okay. And that has obviously allowed other bits of um, positives, I guess, of attracting good people. Yes. Sometimes bad. Yes. And then you learn throughout the okay. from that. Okay. So, and then any sort of relationship I have had, it has honestly, honestly, just happened very naturally. I've mm. never in my life gone to someone and gone, is it official? I've never, ever said that, ever mm. in my life. I've never said that. It's just naturally fit. Grown into the It's just grown, grown into, into something. Yeah. You know, like, when you talk to someone, you know, you're like... You're like, oh, there's something... She's chatting to other people. Yeah, all of that. Okay. Like, you know. That's interesting. Do you know what I mean? I don't think everyone knows. Everyone doesn't know. I know. Yes. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I know. Yeah. Okay, there's, okay. I can ask something and a reaction could... I, I just know. Okay. Because I've done a lot of that. You guys, he still didn't answer the question. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. No, no. But it doesn't. Oh, I actually don't know. I actually don't know. Yeah, because every every relationship is different. So, I like, it, it evolves know. differently. And, and also, obviously, maybe you don't know because, like, a different person brings a different level of, let's just say, insecurity or, like, idea of what it is. And so you might treat it differently. So that's fine. That's uh, Anyone I, that maybe it's I a will silly go question. into a relationship in yes. the future, whatever it is. Yeah. They need to be secure with their self and know who they are. Okay. They need to be. Or it, they won't be able to handle an individual like me. Okay, that's interesting. Makes sense? Why? Because I'm like this. I'm talking about... Got it. I'm talking about sexual things and like relationship yes. stuff with so someone that's challenge, quite attractive. So you might challenge their sense of self. And then it will be your... exhausting for Got me. It. To manage, to manage that. that. Yep. So I wouldn't go there. So you want someone to be able to manage their shit. But I, are you willing for them to bring it to you and say, like, I have this thing. I know it's my shit, but I have this thing. Is that Nicola? No, sorry. good. <laughs> Free to <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> don't say it. Don't say it. So I'm curious about whether, like, how, to what degree are you willing to, because, you know, like, let's just say, like, we're not perfect, right? Yeah, 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 no yeah. one's perfect. Yeah. And so, like, we have to accept that when we enter into a relationship, like, there's elements of, like, quote, unquote, flaws. Let's not call them flaws because they're just, like, you know, realities, vulnerabilities, let's call them. And so, like, maybe someone comes to you and says, like, yeah. oh, I'm super insecure because, you know, whether all your ex-girlfriends have been white and blonde. Like, let's say we're in a relationship right now. I come to you and I'm like, Darren, I get it. But like, also, <laughs> you don't date, oh, you, don't, you don't date brown things, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So like, <laughs> well, I don't know why you're with me now. And it really challenges me. And like, I know, I know I'm yeah. great, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's so like, what? How, to what degree are you willing to accept that your partner yeah. is going to be beautiful, yeah. but they're also going to have their own insecurities? Like, yeah. And part of what makes a relationship great is being able to like hold that space for each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Were you checking the time? He's like, "Fuck." So no, I was not going. at all. Not at all. Not at all. I'm actually just thinking of the best way I can answer this, like <laughs> by getting like. Yeah, I know it's hard. No, it's a hard one. I'm maybe it's not the same. If I love them, yes, I will listen. Yes, got and it. I will take you on board. <clears throat> got it. I take all my family shit on board because I love them. Yes. All my friends because I love them. Yes. If I love them and I see a big future, yes, one thousand percent, I'll be there. A hundred percent for you that, will person. Walk that person, and I will do it. everything. I'll pay for everything. I'll provide everything. I'll give every all of me. Got it. One hundred percent, which is why I can also get hurt very easily too. Oh, it comes out. So actually, you know what? Darren I mean? is trying this hard, hard nut on the outside is protecting <laughs> a soft Shut nut up. on the inside. <laughs> it's true. No, I am. I'm a family guy. Like I am. Like yes, I am. You've seen me in. Yes. I guess in every. Most circumstances. You've seen it. Yeah. You've seen it. You probably wouldn't talk to me if I wasn't that. I mean, I'd have a chat. You'd have a chat, but you wouldn't have this chat. <laughs> no, I mean, no, exactly. You know I, mean? I mean, we're talking years. Yeah. It's been years. Yeah. You've seen me grow from uh, not being someone that is known and having no money or no yep. anything to mm -hmm. like building to a business to, to yes. this point where like I'm something, I guess. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, agree. What about you? How would you, Shona? <laughs> How do I manage it? How would you manage it? And how... So I think the difference here is that, and I'm only speaking for myself, so if you relate to me, great. If you don't and you act in a different way, 
I respect your opinion. And I just want to say that I respect that people are going to have different opinions to me. Um, I feel very naturally monogamous. Mm -hmm. I don't feel the need, although I would definitely say, you know, in my early 20s, I had threesomes. I had all kinds of sexual exploration that I was going through. I was like all about it. I was like, yes, I want to understand what I want. And now, um, you know, I'm 36 or 36 in July and I, I very much feel like I've had that life and I loved it and I loved every part of it. But I'm now at a point where I'm like, oh, I just don't really feel like I need, I feel like I got what I needed from that time in my life and that exploration. So when it comes to multiple sexual partners or multiple experiences with people, first of all, I don't feel like I would have time. So like when I'm with one partner, I feel like I want to explore wholeheartedly how I feel in that partnership. And I want to give my all and give support and really give to them that the idea of like another man coming in and being a part of my life or even another woman, I would find it very hard to manage time Mm. on that front. I also would find it difficult to have sex with someone else Mm -hmm. at the same time. If you're in love. Uh, Yeah. Even, to be honest, even if I'm not in love, I really struggle with multiple partners, okay. multiple sexual partners. Yeah. I do struggle with it. Um, and maybe that's my own inner But you only complex. know that because you experienced it. I only know it because I've experienced yeah, it. And right. it's just like, I just feel uncomfortable. That is not me throwing shade on anyone that has multiple sexual partners. I'm like here for you to do that. I think it's probably my own shit inside of my own like upbringing and whatever shame I have from society to have multiple sexual partners. So I really am not throwing shade on I love on how it. we can just talk and laugh. No, <laughs> yeah, <good>. exactly. So. <laughs> That's my own shit. But basically, one of the things that happens for me, particularly if I do enter into a sexual encounter with another man or any man, let's just say, it usually has to be because I have some level of like intellectual stimulation from them mm. and I have some kind of like, I'm, I probably, yes, pedestalize them in a way where I'm like, oh, wow, I'm really emotionally slash intellectually turned on by you Mm. and that makes me want to be like yes you are welcome to enter me (laughs) yeah so in the context of a monogamous relationship right if I was to have a monogamous relationship or I do have one it's like if I enter into it then I don't I just wouldn't have time to open myself up intellectually Mm. emotionally for another person and therefore it doesn't turn me on the idea of having Mm. sex with someone else now uh, the if my partner was jealous of people that were, um, you know, messaging me, DM sliding, all that sort of stuff, um, I would just have to have a conversation with my partner about that insecurity. Mm. And I would be like, I'd welcome the conversation. I'd say, how do I make you feel safe yeah. without compromising my own values? So I think that you would definitely have, an, like, for example, it's a part of our job mm-hmm. to talk to people. Yeah. Okay, to network, to engage, to talk to different people. Yeah. And those there's an element of flirtation that probably occurs in the interactions yes. you have with other women and other people, right? Yep, yep. And so I'm not saying I, I don't necessarily have that, but there's probably some, there's some like human thing. There's like a spice. I don't yep. know what to call it, but there's energy that we have between people. And I think if we try to like – shame that or say that it's bad or that it's immediately cheating is like not right it takes away the spice and the spark of life so interacting with other people is important for me so I would just be like how do I make you feel safe at the same time not compromise my career or my ability to talk to people or connect with them on whatever level obviously not sexually obviously not you know to those degrees and then the other thing I would say is like I think for safety it's like to what degree can you allow me, or, which I hate that word, like how no, wrong is that? It, it's no, no, wrong, it's wrong. But, but, but. I allow you to to do this with someone else. It, I think, but I don't think it comes from a bad place, but I think like, well, you got to think of it from a team effort. It's like you become one team, no? Right. If you're a family. Right. If I'm becoming a family, I see you as It one. just feels weird to take, it, so to enter into something and be like, someone I love, I'm going to take I'm going to take that ownership or I'm going to say that yeah. like I own a level of your autonomy. Yeah. I that makes me mean. really uncomfortable. But like when I am in that team thing, I I give authorization on the team effort that helps the team. 
that makes sense. Yeah, you both contribute to like something where anything. you're going. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. And so there's certain boundaries that maybe you yeah. set on that. I know but it's I, really it's hard, but it's, it's hard, it, isn't it? I think it? it's harder for a woman though. Why? Because you might have felt like that in the past. Might have felt like what? You feel like I allow you because you might have had bad relationships where. Sorry. So yes, you're trying to establish some level of safety. Safety. So like you saying that, you're like, fuck. Why do I have to say that? Maybe in the part you had to. Yeah, and I think also like it really comes down to really deep primal needs because yes. it's like the allow context is really like, well, if I'm gonna accept your seed, <laughs> let's just yeah. say, and I'm gonna this is gonna take me out of the game for a long time, and I'm gonna like raise this baby, then that means that like I need some guarantee from you that you're going to stay and raise the baby with me, right? And so um, if you're not, and if I think that you're not, then I need to obviously mm. try to mate God essentially, right? I need to make sure I put the things in place. And I think that in today's culture, while we may not be talking babies from like the get-go yeah. from our early relationships, it that is still the running narrative. It's hard to override I'm them. I'm not going to lie. I've any time of like a specimen, I'm like a baby. <laughs> what when you're with a partner that you're like, like fit, that you I'm love? Like, I'm like baby. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about, fam. This is what I'm saying is like you've got some thing going I'm like, on. Baby. I'm like genetics good, stable. I'm just kind of stable. <laughs> just want your seed out baby, there, baby? Let's go. What do you reckon? And to this day, not yet. I'm not gonna lie, girls like it. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, why haven't you had kids then? I want kids. I want kids. I yeah. don't know. I just got to find the right person. Got to uh -huh. find the right person. What is the right person? Someone that just accepts me, I guess. Accepts me fully. Oh, and what is the part that rubs up against people that you've been with in the past? That So what is a part of you that you think that they don't accept? I think prioritizing what I'm doing now and not fully accomplished with what I want to achieve. Business stuff. Business stuff because I want a good life for the family that I want to create so what do you feel like they say like what are the things that commonly come up it's it's not really that they say, into a I, I want to make sure that I, I have enough time to give so it is healthy mm -hmm. how long are you going to be running this story for what do you mean oh that story of Korea that's a thought that I've had recently and you're like how old think, are you now 31 <laughs> no, age, like, do, age doesn't, it really doesn't matter. matter it doesn't it matter but you're never really ready yeah you, really exactly ready. also exactly. why is it why is it about me what about the other person maybe they're not ready yeah but more often than not they're ready like in your circumstances depends on their age I guess yeah it depends on their age yeah age but like where they are in life I think the difference between like men and women as well males and females let's say um, is that like we are running with this biological clock it's, it's, so when I when I find someone that's ready, mm. I'm ready, let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it instantly. Let's go. But yeah, you say this, but like you always have this feeling of are they the one? And then you like really start to like break that down and find flaws in them. I think what well, this is where as you get older, which yes. I definitely will be doing, is actually working on that on instead that of like uh, smoke bombing. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because <laughs> they're like, right, I can't smoke one all the time. There's not enough time anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's not enough time. And the DMs are running out, fam. Yeah. Surely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, they're not running out. <laughs> they're not running out. <laughs> they will. No, they won't. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't think, though. No. That spice you're talking about, I think if you have that spice, that spice brings you to where you are today. And I think you have that with... Every yeah. relationship, every connection. Yeah, totally it's work, every connection. Men, whether exactly female, whether it's romantic or not. Whatever it is. And I think like that's a, a good thing that we shouldn't try to quash with monogamy. Oh no. That's, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's what I'm trying to talk about is like there's an energy that we share with people that exists outside of the context of our relationship. Yeah. And your let's say desire, which isn't I'm not talking about sexual desire. I'm talking about the feeling of want. Let's mm. just say the feeling of want. So you have a feeling of want for everything in life. It might be, I want that new iPad. I want a coffee. I want to talk to that person just yeah. because they're interesting. I want to, whatever, hang out with X, Y, Z, not for a sexual reason. Yeah, yeah. So want, desire, this power of desire, we have it in us at all times existing. And it's constantly like making us, d directing us in different places. Shifting, yeah. yeah. And so 
you have to accept when you enter into a relationship with someone that that desire doesn't just suddenly fall into a container only of that person. It's going to exist when you're not with that person as well. 100%. And so I know that in monogamy, we're trying to really quash that person's ability to exist outside. Yeah. Or it feels like that's what's happening. Yes. But then you kill that life in that person. Mm. You know how sometimes you commonly hear like, I, you know, I, I loved him because he was so vibrant and amazing and like really great. I had great chat and really wanted to go out all the time. And I found that so exciting. And then later on in the relationship, I actually found that to be the part that was the hardest to manage because mm. he was never home or he was never with me or he was never. And so you can't resent the person that you're with for the thing that you fell in love with them for. Yeah. And that so commonly happens. And it happens, I think, because we don't establish what monogamy means to us. We don't own the insecurities that we have. We don't bring them to the fucking table. Yeah. And I guess men struggle with that because they're scared of being vulnerable. That's interesting. So you think this, yeah, okay. 100%. I can't speak for the, I don't want a woman's plane. Because it looks weak. But I'm learning Mm. that actually through that weakness, it's actually strength. Strength and sexiness. But it takes time to recognize that. Yeah. To talk to someone safe about it. Yeah, fair. Do you know what I mean? That's fair. And, that is, and it's mad. Anytime I've had these sort of conversations, it's been with mature women like yourself. Mm. Not girls. Sorry. Not girls. Yeah, women. but that's because they're struggling with their own identity and stuff like that. It's just experience, living life. But you go for younger, you know. No, I don't. Know. Nah, nah. No one knows what I go for. I don't say that anyway. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, next show, question. Show knows, like, I've seen you out. Yeah, I'm I've like, seen you out, Darren. <laughs> I know this but man. you don't see me looking for a wife in a nightclub, do you? Mm, yeah. Are you looking for it on Hinge? Mum's life, I've never had a date in that. Yeah, okay, fine. Mum's life, I've never had a date in that. I, I, How do you feel about dating apps? I think they're shit. That's interesting. I think they're shit. But you have the confidence to walk up to someone on a street. No, I've had the practice and then I had the confidence. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about pra- it. Okay. I've had it. Hector, we keep good to carry on. There's no one else at 11, right? All right, cool. Sick. All day podcast. Yeah, yeah. No, I've had practice and then that confidence came. I, I got rejected, rejected, rejected. Then I this. didn't care. I love this. Dating apps are shit. Dating apps are shit. No, no, no. I mean, look, I think that there are people in isolated circumstances. There are people who don't have the confidence and so they want, and so maybe they, for whatever it's reason. It's their choice, Shona. It's their choice. I'm isolated. Get out of your house then, innit? <laughs> Get out of your house, bro. Okay. If you're not, if you're not taking action on it, you're choosing to live like that. Yeah. You know, so. Like, I d- I'm just going to clear this up. Yeah. I don't like them either, but yeah. I don't like them for different reasons. Okay. I can, I can accept that there are people out there that maybe that's just the way that they interact and so it helps them to break the ice helps mm. to connect with people there's one yeah. i saw the other day which is like it's called like even even or something and it brings single parents together oh, oh. which i thought was really cool milfs and dilfs bring it it's yeah. like because it's hard you know, if you have kids there's this whole other element to dating so how do you meet people like you can't i mean yeah you can be walking what you're walking with a stroller and you're like hey why not what are you doing tonight this is that's the thing Okay, that's, fine, fair. That is that's hot. The Actually, thing. that's pretty hot. Imagine this, like, like hot mum's walking and she's just like. But that's <laughs> but that's the thing, though. Why is it? Like, that's what, because like, it's like, because now society is turning around and saying, like, you can't do that. That's not acceptable. Mm. Why? Why is it not? Yes, I do. Th- I do agree with you that we have you know? to, like, challenge and the only way is through. Agree. Yeah. But let's just say, like, there are some people who are like, you don't understand. I struggle with, like, severe something and I can't just jump from this to this. Yeah. So maybe that's the case. And so this helps them. It's like a little bit of exposure therapy because maybe for some people it brings them so much anxiety to just even talk to someone. Yeah, I get that. Right, I guess. to even have an engage. And I know exposure therapy is a thing, right? And yeah. this is like, I, I talk about this a lot. Is like, actually, when you look at all the different mood disorders we have or like um, various different mental disorders that are out there, the, the number one uh, therapy for a lot of them tends to be actually exposure therapy, mm. which is where you very in a controlled environment, slowly expose them to it. Right. So I understand that if you have a fear or a trauma, let's just say of talking to someone mm. or engaging with someone romantically, the only way is through. Yes. You have to just start little by little. So I think dating apps maybe offer this opportunity for people to start to practice yeah. and then they meet and then that still brings them a lot of anxiety. And then over time they get better and better. Yeah. 
So I agree with you though. Yeah. It's very sexy to have someone approach you. Then there's this whole other element that we have, oh. which is like, is it allowed? I wonder how you manage that mm. as a man, not wanting to make any woman feel intimidated or scared, yes. but at the same time, yeah. how do you juggle it? You have to approach it very carefully. You have to read the situation. Got it. You have to read. You have to look at that person and be like, I mean, if that person's on a phone or rushing somewhere, you don't stop them for yeah. like, well, you can, but like there's an approach that you would have, whether it's with your body language. If you're someone that's anxious or someone that's stressed and you approach someone with that energy, mm. they're going to pick up on that and they're not going to like it. If it's very casual, mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie, in Sydney, I did some mad things. Mm -hmm. Like I did some mad things where like I would do the most random thing to like chat to someone. And it would work what because did you I didn't do? care. Let's bring it. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. My bad. Don't worry. Can I ask if this would work? Uh, uh, you know what? I'll, uh, Will you say it? I'll say it. It's not, it's not a bad thing. It's not, I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, the time I like ended like that. One relationship, yeah, yeah. With the wedding yeah. situation. Oh, the wedding, yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally, I saw like a girl that I thought that was like attractive mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. I literally just walked up to him and said... Was it an establishment? It was an establishment. It was, because that's where I used to go after the gym. <laughs> that's where I used to go Got after it. the gym. Amazing. That's right. where I used to go after. That's so funny. Um, yeah, I literally just walked up and just was like, yo, just so you know, for the last seven years, I've been with the same girl in it, and I've been loyal as fuck, and tonight I want you to be my first mistake. And, how, and she responded positively. She looked positively. at me for five seconds, see if I was talking shit. And she, she said, responded. I'll grab my bag. <laughs> I mean, this is an outlier case. Like, this does not happen to everyone Yo, all the time. Try anything and everything you guys want in it. You never know. So you what? Never okay, know. but what about? Would you ever like? Because I, I think about this all the time. I'm sounding like such a dickhead. Ever. I mean, okay, whatever. It's done now. <laughs> I'm just. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> whatever. I mean, it's good to get this insight because it's. You know, I reckon. What's I don't know what your audience split is. Male, female, Most like female. There you go. So it's like, actually, these. Qu I'm trying to ask the questions that, like, I know it's that. It's your podcast now. This <laughs> is shit. But it's so nice to get this perspective. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a perspective that a lot of people are scared to share. Yeah, Okay, yeah. so I yeah. get, so respect for yeah. coming out and saying these things. I also um, want to state that, like, at Also, that you don't time, sound like a dick. You don't sound like a dick. At that time in my life, yeah. these are things I didn't do. As in, like, you'd I been didn't, seven years. I didn't approach someone and... Got it. And I didn't experience that in yeah. a club where I had money in my pocket. I could buy someone a drink. Yes. I never experienced that. I never took a girl to Mr. Wong's. Yes. And go, which is a nice restaurant in Sydney, where I'm like, I'm paying for dinner. Never experienced that. And I wanted to experience those things. Mm. I walked in as someone instead of a young kid that just fell in love, like puppy love, and didn't know what, how to manage it. Yes. Anything. You know what I mean? So it was a nice experience experience in it life was an for you outburst of i want to do this i want to feel this i want to yes. feel that i felt that now that was nice do i need it every day i don't and you only realize that like when you do those things through experience yeah so like so that's why i think those things are important to live through yeah. so you because then same as like a woman having like other mates before they get uh other other people that they mate with like before getting married like yeah. you, i guess you need to know what you like and what you don't Yes. Then you're yeah, exactly. Like your That's why life. I'm like, don't, you know? Yeah, I definitely try to remove the the shame of like, yeah, have multiple partners, do your thing. Um, I just have my own, you know, let's just say childhood teenage reasons for not wanting to, you know, for having those things that sexually inhibit me in certain ways. But definitely, I think like everyone has to experience life in their own way. We're all here to experience it in different ways. There's no perfect way. There is no perfect like, way. Is, no, exactly. And that's, again, why it's like I hate some of the things about cancel culture frustrate me because when we're so quick to throw shade at someone um, for their experience of life, I think that's when it's like you just don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's like I think offering perspective is one thing, but offering perspective with this like thread of shame mm -hmm. is where it's like we've got to. Oh, people that do that anyway they're just projecting how they feel about themselves yeah so. that's very true that's <laughs> this very true every time I've dropped are like you getting shade for this body stuff oh yeah I'm surprised you're getting shade for it what are they saying so for context 
you want to share the context? This is not my yeah, podcast. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm yeah, of course. A, sorry for I was going to ask you this anyway. Wait, okay. But you feel free to leave. Sharon. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. No, go for it. <laughs> no, no. I basically, I've been seeing a lot of your posts in regards to coming after, uh, you know, this is on, both on TikTok and, and uh, Instagram coming after people that are um, doing these kind of like body comparison type things. Mm. Are they body comparison? I don't know. The things where they're like, okay, in this lighting, I look like this, but it's also normal for me to look like this in this lighting. And maybe they have like a fucking speck of cellulite. Like it's, they don't even have cellulite. They have a line. Yeah. Or they're like sitting and like kind of crunching and saying, you know, this is okay, but this is also okay or lovable and still lovable, those sorts of things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've been kind of coming after that and calling bullshit on it yeah. and saying like this is absolutely ridiculous. There are people out there that are having and experiencing yeah. like significant… People that I train, I coach. People that you coach. And I see it, you know. So. Exactly. And so this stuff is actually patronizing to them. Oh, so patronizing. The only reason I know that is because I talk to them about it. And yeah, and so messages. they don't feel good. Yeah, no, no. That you can see that they're yeah. actually, listen, there's but, a lot so, of people, so what I wanted to know was why are the people, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, sorry. Well, I, I wanted to know why people, what people are coming at you for. Okay, so the last couple of times was like, I got called a bully and shit for like out For going after person. women. Which by the way, it. I wasn't, because there was a guy as well I did it to, but like I wasn't, uh, which I found very weird actually a guy doing it it was just like bro come on bro allow it <laughs> but he's doing it because those videos are popular exactly, exactly. that's what most people are doing that's it for. why they're doing it they don't care come no. on man like it's bullshit well yeah but then I thought to myself maybe the people that are doing it the girls that are thin and doing it actually suffer from body dysmorphia maybe but then they should grow up and actually look at the and then maybe actually look at the people that they're serving and actually have a reality check and be like right or mm. or we as consumers of content yeah. need to be more careful about yes. what we're praising and what we're validating as Agreed. well there's a responsibility and when you look and you even comment on this in the video you say i read through the comments and it's like this go girlfriend like yes yeah. yes queen like own it i also think there's a lot of bullshit in that energy as well Yes, queen, go. I don't need no man. I don't need nothing. Probably. Like, come on, bro. You just want a hug. Probably. Or there's probably <laughs> girls that are sort of supporting it because maybe some way they, they feel they relate to it. I mm. wanted to read to you, like, what the DSM-5 says about um, body dysmorphic disorder. Yeah, go for it. And by the way, so the DSM-5 is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders. So it's like this huge manual. It gets updated, I want to say, every. 30 years might be maybe might be less than that but basically it's what psychologists will use clinical psychologists will use to um, pathologize something based on or, or basically it's psychopathology so it's essentially looking at something and saying I'm going to ask you a series of questions if you meet this criteria it's likely that you have this thing mm -hmm. okay so um, I will hands down say I'm not a psychologist yet I'm obviously at uni becoming one but that and that's my goal but um so I'm not, I'm not coming from a place of experience of diagnosing body dysmorphic disorder, but I've been familiarizing myself a lot with the DSM-5. Um, and what is very scary is that when you read the criteria, you realize that maybe a lot of people in the fitness industry, especially the people with a huge profile, have body dysmorphic disorder. Yeah. Now, we cannot pathologize them. We cannot say you definitely have it. But let me just read you what the criteria is, okay? So criteria A, preoccupation with one or more perceived deficits or flaws in physical appearance that are not observable or appearable slight to others. So that might be like you think you have something wrong. It's not always just related to fat, by the way. It, yeah. it could be anything. It could be like, I have a funny nose. Yeah. And others are not thinking like, you have a funny nose. And generally speaking, no one can see that, but you're like, oh my God. You're conscious okay. of it, yeah. Yes. So one or more perceived of these. Okay. B, at some point during the course of the disorder, the individual has performed repetitive behaviors, mirror checking, mm. excessive grooming, skin picking, reassurance seeking, Okay, that's a big one because that's Instagram in general. Or mental acts comparing his or her appearance with that of others. I mean, mm -hmm. for fuck's sake, that's, every, like, that's everyone. That's everyone, everyone on yeah, social yeah, media, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. In response to the appearance concerns. C, the preoccupation causes clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, 
or other areas of functioning. And the problem with this is that we don't know. Like we don't know if it's impairing someone when we look at them online. D, the appearance and preoccupation is not better explained by concerns with body fat or weight in an individual whose symptoms meet diagnostic criteria for an eating disorder. So obviously this is just body dysmorphic disorder, but sometimes the kind of like symptoms blend. And so as a clinical psychologist, your job would be to discern the difference through questioning, right? And through formal questioning. Now, the preoccupation has to cause clinical significant distress or impairment in um, social functioning, which I said already, and it's not better accounted for for another disorder. So <clears throat> there's also specific ones because you've also got um, muscle dysmorphia. So this one is obviously the one that often happens with men. It's more prevalent yeah. in ma- males. And so it's the idea that his or her body is too small and insufficiently muscular. I definitely have that because I would just love to be massive. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. Um, the, <laughs> so basically um, – it's one that definitely would be in in the fitness industry with men a lot. Yes. Okay. But when you think about that criteria, right? Oh, I got another. I had another page. But basically, when you think about that criteria, it's a bit scary because we can very easily hide um, these things on social media, and not just hide, but actually normalize. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how fucking scary that is? That is. But let me let me say something about all of that. Yeah. Any influencer that feels like that about themselves, I think they need to. The reason you influence people or whatever, or you're in a f- position where you have loads of followers and people see you're a public figure or whatever you are, is that you're different. You're different to somewhat level. You're different. Mm-hmm. So people, whether they look up to you or look at you to seek information, mm-hmm. wherever it is, you should be stronger. You should be smarter. Right. In ways, you should be more aware of your responsibility of what you put out. Okay. So, right. So, you're different. Okay. So, don't walk in to a fucking event and act like you're different. Right. Think you're all of this and that. Yes. Then do a post like that. Okay. I'm not saying act like a God. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is just acknowledge that you're different. Yeah. And acknowledge that people are seeking your information that wants to help them so i actually think so when they're doing that they're belittling actual problems people are having with their bodies a bit like when someone is born into fucking money and has a trust fund tries to relate to some brother that has nothing yeah or even when pts are like everyone has the same 24 hours a day and then like you've got like parents or you have like people struggling with two jobs or whatever and so it's like not so helpful to say that yeah it does belittle it does belittle I think, like, what do you say then? What do you think is the solution if these people don't draw too much attention to it? Yeah, I mean, I know what you're saying, fam, but it's like, I just the reason I'm having this conversation with you is I'm not I'm not uh, questioning what you're doing because I actually like you know I see it too and I'm like, oh man, like I get I get it and I and I you know posted that comment, which was basically saying like I would love to hear from anyone who Mm. is you know, either experiencing body dysmorphic disorder or anyone who um, has posted stuff like that. Mm. I mean, I was hoping that some of those women would write on that comment and say like, hey, this is the feeling. But then when I, so I did some research and I was looking at this body body dysmorphic disorder and thinking maybe these girls have that Mm. and they don't know. Mm. And therefore actually to them, they do perceive these flaws as big as maybe mm. some of the other people who are experiencing that in bigger bodies. And they're human. I understand. Like they're human. They're people still. So they can feel those feelings. Yes. But you're saying own the responsibility. 1000%. Yeah. So, and don't do it like the way you're doing it. Yeah. Because it's bullshit. So like do it in a. Well, what you're doing is normalizing body dysmorphia because actually you're drawing more attention to the body because that's what they're doing. They're basically saying like, you know, I'm still lovable here and I'm still lovable here. But the fact that they're doing this kind of like, you know, scrunching over and grabbing fat or whatever. When you're 12% body fat. Yeah. When you're very low percent body fat is basically saying, I mean, it's, it's, it's saying a lot of things. So it's saying it's a lot like of things, very, right? Yeah. It's very. Yeah, when you think weird. about it, it's just like, how fucked up is this world? <laughs> I know. Like, it's mad. Like you wouldn't. Would your mom ever think of that stuff back in the day? Like it's mad. No. Do you know what I mean? So like. And no. also like. Oh, I swear it was a it was a movement that was made by like big black women back in mm-hmm. 
I don't know when. 60s or 70s or I, I don't know. Yeah. Like that. I mean, it's, it's, a lo- it's an old movement and it's, it's been around movement. for a long time. And it comes from struggle. Yeah. Not, I'm sorry. Yeah. Not some dickhead with 100,000 followers yeah. and gets free meals. Yeah. Gets paid online. Mm. I'm so, it, you got no struggle. So you might have body dysmorphia, but maybe you should have a reality fucking check. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that there's, yeah, there's definitely things that are, are problematic about that. It's like, that's social media, isn't it? Because it's like, we're now present, we're now giving everyone a platform. Yeah. And a lot, you know, you give everyone a platform and not everyone has awareness that maybe they have this disorder. Yeah. So like. You know, or not even, and maybe they don't even have the disorder. Maybe they're like, before they meet the criteria. Maybe it's not clinically impairing or impairing their life to a degree, but it's heading in that direction. And the problem is, is that it's. It's just creating this culture that I love that you're challenging. And I think that's the part where I'm like, yes, fam, challenge it. And you're right. It's very hard, like, because women are coming at you for only attacking women. And the problem is, is that the majority of this content type comes from women. Yes. You found one where it was a guy. I I found it and I was like, great, just one. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, thank God, someone. Some man is doing it. Because then I actually think they're actually creating that. I actually think they're creating that disorder. Those posts, I think, create it. Uh, yeah, I don't think that they're, um, they're definitely not. I mean, they're certainly not in that. When I look at the criteria for treating yeah. body dysmorphia, it definitely doesn't say post about your and flaws. Question, if a post, say, say you, yeah. if that post created that disorder for you, yeah, or, or are you like going to gonna comment on there and go, you made me feel great, yes or no? The ones that suffer won't comment like that. You understand? Get one I don't know. I feel like the ones that suffer. Oh, sorry. Hang on, hang on. The ones that, that are suffering from their own um, physical issue. No, the ones that, that the ones that the they ones create. That, that create body dysmorphia. So, like, when you sometimes pay attention to that, yeah. like I know women that have gone and gone. Oh, I didn't think that was a problem before. Is it? Oh, I see what you're saying. And then they look you're into right. it. They're yeah, like, oh shit, it's a yes. problem. Oh my god, I didn't know having those roles were bad. I just gave birth to yes. three kids. Fuck. Yes. They're not going to comment and go, Got it. I feel right. really bad that you posted this. They're like, I don't want to talk about that. Yes. And then it builds up into a bad thing that I'm coaching. Yeah, it gets into. And when I have one-to-one calls, I see it. Yeah. I mean, create, it, you're right. It does. I think it you does stimulate. I mean? It makes you second guess and you go, oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. Totally. It, it's, an, it's definitely an issue. I do think that like, oh, yeah. I don't even know how to really address it. I don't even think, you know, it's that helpful on Instagram um, for anyone to see that sort of stuff. It's too much attention on the body. And that's the thing is that the whole point is to try and move away from the attention you're giving the visual aspects of your body. Yeah. Um, But I, I think I can't comment on because I feel very privileged to have had you know, whatever, a body that somewhat fits the beauty standard, right? Yeah, yeah, My yeah. whole life. So it's it's never been, these issues haven't been a problem for me on that front. I've definitely um, experienced some of the symptoms, particularly when I went down my bodybuilding phase, like yeah. the bodybuilding comps, I'll bikini comps, falls. which honestly, like I would have to say, you know, I have good, good friends of mine that, you know, coach women on it and encourage it and encourage that process. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I bless her. She's my, I yeah, she's love cool. her. She's, she's my angel. I, I, she's, you know, I would say up there, like one of my closest friends, we've been through so much together, but the issue I have with competing and she's very clear and open and honest about this. Mm. Like she's very clear. She's like, it is, it is going to challenge and confront you. And a big part of her training program and coaching is, is actually to coach through the psychology of things. They actually have a neuropsych that they work with. Oh, that's cool. That's like working with the girls. So this is me not, I'm not throwing shade she's on that. She's also but, one of the best in the world. <laughs> and she's one of the best in the world. So there's, again, you have this like outlier. The problem is, is that, you know, you see photos of people that are the best in the world and it doesn't just have to be someone like Hattie. It can also be like any athlete. And we have such accessibility to these people. And the yeah. problem is, is that we start to then compare ourselves and our endeavors to those people, forgetting that those people like live for that. They're getting paid yeah. for that. They have like constructed an entire life on that. Whereas you haven't, maybe you did, you know, go to uni, get a job. Now you work nine to five. Now you have kids. And if you're making any kind of comparisons to that person, like it's so unhelpful. It's so unhelpful, so unhealthy for sure. And it's an, it's definitely an issue. And that lack of empathy is definitely an issue in our fitness industry in general. But I think like you know, if you are thinking of competing, if you do pedestalize 
twelve percent body fat as a woman, eight percent as a man, or whoever it is four percent as a man, or something ridiculous like that, right? Just really do some deep work before you go ahead with that kind of thing. Because I just haven't spoken to a single person that has come out of that without yeah, a some... very close to <laughs> disorder in some it, way. I just, I just haven't. I actually just think if you're a, um, if you're a woman and you're not quite, and you're not genetically lean, I wouldn't compete. That's interesting. Yeah. I just wouldn't. If you're not genetically lean and blessed, I wouldn't compete. It's mad. If you're genetically got higher body fat. It's going to be real bad for you. It's going to be real bad. It's even bad for the people that are already lean. And the ones that always, they bounce back quite bad. I always realize the girls that are not genetically lean bounce back. Yeah, that's interesting. Hattie is, I've seen her train. She's a fucking animal. Yeah. Beast. Beast. She's also, though, I've seen pictures, I think, where she's posted, like, when she was younger or something. Comparison. Yeah, exactly. And I look at that as well, and I'm like, yeah, but she was quite genetically lean. She's been through a lot and so she is an outlier and I do think that she very much prepares people for that experience that you're about to have and so you just have to know that if you're about to embark on anything extreme whether it's bodybuilding competitions whether it's any kind of sport that there's going to be an element where you're very much confronted I mean this we're talking about the body only like body and appearance only but like I would say even at high level I've spoken to high level jiu-jitsu athletes who you know if they don't have a winning streak or they start to lose their winning streak they start to question their identity yeah, yeah. because they lived at such what an extreme level of commitment. It was all they had. And so you have to understand that these things really start to play on you mentally. For sure. So it's just it's just being aware of who we pedestalize 100%. in the world, right? When we look at pictures of people on Instagram, when we look at people, we have to really try to, and it's difficult, but we have to really try to remember that we just don't know everything about their life. 100 And if you are like, if, if you're a woman that wants to do bodybuilding, I don't advocate it at all. But like you should be training with someone like Hattie. Yeah. Not a geezer that's like, I'm sorry. I'm sure there's good coaches, bodybuilding coaches as a man. Not a geezer that charges 50 quid a month. And doesn't yeah, understand female careful. physiology. It, or doesn't understand women, period. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so this, bodybuilding is a mental battle. Like it's, it's not hugely mental. So it's like it creates and then. Oh, I've seen so many. They've all blocked me now. But like girls that have done bodybuilding and then flip the script and do these posts. Oh, yes. Oh, because then they God. come out. Well, because they're, I think that, I do think we post a lot about what we're healing with ourselves. Yeah. This is something that it's worth knowing. If you don't work in content creation mm. and you just, you know, you're you're consuming all the time. Um, something that you have to understand is that often the things that people post about are the things that they've are very close to processing. They're e- they they either integrated or they're very close to kind of it being a, a thing in their mind. Mm. So, you know, you've done posts about being a guy that's like, I don't have a six pack or like not always yeah. having a six pack, right? Maybe you do now, but it's like, and you've talked about how, you know, it shouldn't define you and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm sure you've expressed that from your own healing journey, not from a thousand percent. Totally. So it's like you are coming from a place of like, this is something that I am I either kid. experiencing or have experienced. Exactly. And so the same thing happens for a lot of the women that I think are out there writing about these things. It's something that they're currently mm. managing and processing themselves. Yeah. So it's important to remember that if you're consuming. 100%. But I also, yeah. Yeah. 100%. I do agree with that. I'm just trying to say, like, I don't think that these girls are necessarily evil, but I I like your anger yeah, yeah. and passion towards it. I, I don't think they're evil either. When I do, I don't really at them. I might make a joke about them or something, but yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, actually yeah. going for the jugular. Because yeah. if I wanted to, I really could. Yeah, like, could I'm, yeah, I'm totally. good at that. <laughs> like yeah. I'm East London school, like you had to be good at that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like I, I could do that. But so when people do at me, like bullying, you're doing this to women, you're belittling this, blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, it, honestly, I don't care about one person compared to thousands that could get impacted? I think at the end of the day, Darren, this is something I've learned online, is that you're just never going to make everyone happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always going to trigger someone somewhere down the line. And so you've actually just got to do whatever you feel closest to being aligned with. Yeah. Do you you feel comfortable about talking about every topic? Because most of your following would be women. Women? Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk about everything and anything? Or do you feel like sometimes you have to be careful? Uh, no, I definitely feel like I have to be careful mm. because for a number of reasons, like I am not an enlightened being. And so I'm aware of the fact that 
what I put out there, I have to be very careful that like it's not coming from a place of my own blind spot. You know what I mean? Like maybe yeah. I'm coming, maybe I'm speaking ignorantly. Um, other reasons that I get scared is because us females, yeah. <laughs> us women can be ruthless. Oh, we have different way ways. Worse. We have more covert ways of bullying that are gossip. painful. Yeah, gossip, not just gossip. I mean, I like, I'm sure you've heard about them, but there's like all those gossip pages mm. that are disgusting. Yeah. Oh, Truly disgusting. Them. If you've ever engaged in one, I would just take a hard look in the mirror because, and, and look in the mirror because for you to feel good about engaging with one of those gossip forums, you have to be like, I must be really unhappy in my life. For sure, yeah. And yeah. maybe I need to address that rather than scratching this itch here on yeah. this particular, you know, forum. So. Well, they're your biggest fans. Who? The people that are talking on. Yeah, they're your biggest fans. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't see it as that. But anyway, I don't even know because I haven't. Yeah, people that have I haven't read them. Off you. Trust me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me 100%. So I haven't read them, but I think. I think there's definitely an element of like when you have a uh, big female audience, like there is always that little bit of underlying fear. And that has a lot to do with, you know, socialization. And that's why I'm like, I really try to push us to be, to challenge ourselves. So whenever someone else, you know, what's funny, trigger warnings, something interesting about trigger warnings. They Is that like the trigger post? Is that when people say, what do you no, mean No, when that? someone says trigger oh, okay. warning, this post will talk yeah, that, about yeah, this. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So you've seen them before, right? Yeah. Okay, so we think we're doing the right thing if we say trigger warning. I'm going to talk about this. But the research says otherwise. So they've done research on this. Psychologists will talk about it. A trigger warning is actually potentially more damaging for the person who's experiencing the trauma or who has experienced the trauma because you actually maintain something like PTSD through avoidance. For avoidance behaviors. So um, actually my psychopathology um, professor, like at the beginning of the the lectures of the unit, she was like, I will never give you a trigger warning. And mm -hmm. this is because you need to understand that this entire um, thing may or may not be triggering. And so what you have to understand is that a trigger warning is actually going to be more problematic. She just listed a whole bunch of studies that were like, and this is, I'm not just talking like one-off studies or meta-analysis looking at mm -hmm. a collective of high-quality studies demonstrating that it's actually not great to have a trigger warning. <laughs> <laughs> I started to get that. I was like, you looked very professional to do that. No, okay, so, amazing. So basically, um, when it comes to – so one of the things that happened well, – I can't remember what I was talking about, why I was talking about triggers um, – After the, uh, the gossip people. Yeah, gossip pages. And so – Trauma, trigger, trigger create. warnings, trauma. Mm, I can't remember. Anyway, basically, I wanted to talk about it anyway. I wanted to bring it up with you because I don't. You don't do it. You know, you don't really bring a trigger warning to your no. post or anything like that. You'll just address the topic, and it's actually a better way to, to kind of do it. I actually, actually think people do it because it's more engaging. That's interesting. Mate, there's always an underlying snaky fucking thing with influencers. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's all for like. Let's say, let's not even say it's influencers because influencers get a bad rap. It's content creators. It's but the thing it's is, content creators, influencers man. like influencers or content creators, if they get paid for views or mm -hmm. paid for posts, mm -hmm. their intention is more engagement. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. not just influencers. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, right. If anyone right. who creates content online yeah. understands the rules, and the rule is get as many clicks as you can. Attention. It's attention. Get, yeah. It's. Totally. It's all attention. It's all attention. Exactly. So and like, so, so coming back to your question about like, do I ever get scared? This The thing I have fear about is like, I know I need to have attention on the app in mm -hmm. order to get my message across. Yeah. But I'm unwilling to address uh, or to compromise on some of the topics. Got you. Um, some topics I just don't think that we could ever create enough nuance to yeah. really like be able to address them properly. Yeah. But also... I'm aware of the fact that if I don't follow the norm, mm -hmm. particularly the loud norm, mm -hmm. okay, that my opinion will be like quashed. And then that kind of like bullying, online bullying that you get, if you have an opinion that sits outside of the norm, yeah, I have to grapple with whether I have the internal strength. Like okay. I think you, James, like that crew, you guys – have some kind of ability to not care. Mm. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. It really hurts me because I get scared. 
I get scared that maybe I've like, am I hurting someone? And I like second guess myself. I'm a people pleaser. So it really triggers that people pleaser mm. in me. And it, it's not a good thing. I don't think it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, and it limits me from sometimes being as authentic yeah. about myself as I would like to be. Mm. I know that my views on relationships are confrontational. I know that they are somewhat confronting for people to face and they are not commercially yeah. very good. Because basically what I'm saying is that like I agree with something outside of the norm and yeah. therefore someone's going to say to me like, how dare you? Yeah. And then I get the mob. It's mad that you have to address that because this only happens because people are scared to confront. Yeah. And so the, the, the problem <laughs> with that then is that it leads us to having these big echo chambers yeah. or worse, we have a society that's dishonest. We do, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because people yeah. are too scared to be honest. Yeah. Because of the mob. Yeah. And how do we grow? How do we progress as a society? Most people grow at the minute by playing the game, whatever the game is. Oh, I don't mean work. growth, like engage, like follower yeah. growth. I mean, like, how do we grow as people? Well, that's what I mean in general, though. Oh, like you that, think they grow? Okay. As people as well. How many people do you talk to and go, you're full of shit? They're playing the game of, I need to be this interesting. I need to be this. Mm. So they're playing the game, whether it's at work, whether it's on a date, whether it's Instagram, whatever it is, they're mm. playing the game of, I need to be something. I need to be this to be accepted from that. Yeah. Instead of just being and actually surrounding the right people around them. I, I fucking probably sound like I have it all figured out. But just so you know, I really don't. <laughs> yeah, it's a constant process. For yeah, sure. it's always like, but. I think we have to accept to round this one up is like that it's both the content creator and the content consumer yeah. responsibility. So it's not just like all, it doesn't all fall on Deering, yes, yeah, yeah. it actually falls on the consumers of Deering to be like, okay, I'm going to take what he says with a pinch of salt. Yeah, I'm going to say, okay, he has had this experience and therefore this has shaped his life. Yeah, I agree with what he's saying or I disagree with what yeah. he's saying, but I'm going to blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's mad though. The way some people's comments, like it re honestly, it really doesn't affect me. But like I've got inboxes going, what if she killed herself? And I'm like, mm. like, I don't want to be heartless, but like, how is that my fault if something like that happened? Like, I'm not, obviously, oh, let's be. Well, you're not tagging them. I'm not, I'm not, ta but like in general, if someone's got really deep problems with their life, how is that my fault? But I'm not bullied, mm. like, do you know I what I mean? I know what you're saying. I think there's like, there's a fine line here though, because I do know, I mean, I was, you know, had an experience of like people coming after me at one point online and yeah. it fucking gets you down. Like when yeah. it's really bad. Yeah. And maybe it doesn't affect you. Yeah. But when it's really bad and people are coming after you and saying like horrible things, like it's going beyond the actual thing that they were upset about. And now it's just like oh, an influx. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just an influx of things like I had race. I had like oh, same, all I've different. Had that. Yeah, yeah, you've yeah. had that too. Right. Yeah, and yeah, so like when it gets to that point, you're just like. Well, it's sad. Yeah, this sure. is not. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, fine. But you're right. So for some people, some young girls, they can't, they can't manage that. And also yeah. I would argue that. Um, you're going to have a, a normal distribution, a bigger amount of women yeah. who are people pleasers or who are experiencing that. So when they have yeah. that, it is bullying. And that social exclusion, we know we feel pain. <laughs> we feel it the same as physical pain. Yeah. And so that can really impact someone. I don't think it's about saying it's your fault. Yeah. But it's I maybe what their intention is to send you that DM is to go like, you know, be careful coming after that type of person. But at the same time, I think you're not tagging them. You're yeah. not kind of going going in on that person directly. No. You're just saying, hey, this is really problematic and let me talk about why. Yeah. So you're coming after the concept, not so much the person. Yeah. Um, I it's don't know the what message. the answer is, yeah. fam. I don't know what the answer is. It's really hard. It's like, hard, yeah. It's, yeah, it's weird. But it, I guess it's just opinions. Not everyone's going to agree. Some people really agree. And then that's why like anytime I do a post like that, I would really highly recommend individuals not to attack the person. That's never my intention. Mm. It's just the message. Yeah, which is why you don't tag them. It's just a message. It's attacking the message. A shit message. That's all it is. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the girls that you've shared have like huge followings. I saw one on TikTok the other day that you shared, which was like someone that has like Million. in the millions. Three, four million. It's so upsetting. And then we receive the DMs that are like, hey, how do I get rid of my hip dips? Or how do I get rid of my, yeah. like, whatever it is. And and I'm like, this is the stuff that's perpetuating the body dysmorphia. Yes. So it's like lesser of two evil. Because the truth is when people are that big, whether it's three, four, five million, they're actually very disconnected from their audience. That's true. The bigger you get. 
the more disconnected it does get. So when they're yes. disconnected and they're disconnected they have to go from more their extreme. business, oh, that's they have to go, they're disconnected to their business, which means because they're not they're running the show, oh. they don't actually understand the suffering people are going through. Oh, Therefore, that. have a team of PR, media, don't say this, do that, do this, do that. And it's that. a numbers game. It's a numbers they're game. After numbers. They're after numbers. And therefore, they will choose to go down the path of What's like what gets now? the highest engagement. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's less of a connection to whether this is actually going to be yeah. – detrimental which is why i'm like it's so dishonest and i wish people understood how this game works to understand why i'm doing that yeah exactly it's a bigger picture it's, it's not during picture. the misogynist coming after yeah, no. an individual woman no, yes no, no. yeah exactly. i agree i agree and i see that too and i think most people see yeah. you read mo most of the yeah. comments which by the way i i know i'm going to get engagement from my post i, I know mm -hmm. that but i know it's for the right reason and a good reason yes so if i am like and then if i'm so there's people comments like Dieran's doing this because he's got his own online coaching yeah a very fucking good one and mm. I'm good at what I do mm -hmm. so yes 100% I'll advocate and talk about if I'm getting more engagement I know whoever's going to pay me for a service they're getting sick service and yeah. in the right way yeah instead of an influencer that has no experience in coaching or connection with people. Oh, that's a really big point do you understand what I mean? so like I, that's why I'm like mm. fully comfortable with out in those individuals or even talking to them being like cool how many years did you coach yeah how many do you know your clients names i'm just wondering yeah that's a really good point <laughs> no i don't <laughs> do you know what i mean so like cool come for me it's calm i can talk to you about it because you know so he said it you heard it here first come after darren yes come for it good luck good luck it's happened before but i'm just like and i'm ha i'm happy to sit and talk to anyone about it yeah I don't. I, I. I really don't think you're doing the wrong thing in coming after people for for that. I. I don't. And you know, I'm happy to be wrong here, mm -hmm. um, and for someone to share a different perspective. I. I feel like I tried to really dive deep on that by having that comment there and trying to understand. And you know, I don't think that I had any person write to me saying. I think I, from memory, nah. I don't think I had anyone write to me saying it's actually really helpful to see this in other women. Yeah, there was a few people coming. I think added me was like. Doing grow the fuck up. You don't know what women go through. Fucking this, fucking that. And I'm like, okay. Well, so here's the <laughs> yeah, so so here's the thing. And that's what I mean is like maybe they're maybe they genuinely do feel insecure about those things. But you know what's mad, yeah? And I don't want to be like disrespectful to any women, mm. right? But like, I'm sorry, but I know more about your menstrual cycle than you do, some of you guys. And from the amount of volume of women I've coached. I actually have a very good understanding. Mm, of like how it impacts your sense of self as well as your water levels, your, yeah, everything. So someone in shape water that retention. is very confident mm -hmm. or someone only sees four or five women around them, right? They only see their struggles. Mm. They don't see the masses. Yes. We're exposed to the masses. Yes, 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 So yes. we can see ways the fluctuations. of yep. that they don't. So when they at me, I was like, what would you know? You're not a woman. I'm like, this is why I know. Because I actually see it. Yes. Whereas you only chat to three of your fucking mates that probably don't like you. He's going in. <laughs> so, He's going in. Shots fired. No, no, I'm just like. <laughs> I know. I know. I can you know imagine I mean? it's so irritating. It's like, I know. I'm not, I'm not a woman, of course. I'm not a woman. But like, I feel like I understand quite a bit. From yes. Years well, of coaching. Well, you understand coaching. enough to know that that is problematic more than it's supporting. Yeah. That's all the argument is here. Is like, yeah. is this really that helpful? Yeah. No, actually, when you take pull pieces of evidence together, and I think, look, I think you have the, the anyone listening that disagrees with Darren's posts on that front, present a freaking case, like present yeah. a case, show the evidence that actually it's really helpful, whether it's research, empirical, whether it's like, you know, thousands of women that are like, I actually find it really helpful yeah. <laughs> because I think you're going to find that, that they're just not out there. Yeah. It's also embarrassing. You're just like a fucking idiot. <laughs> it is, isn't it? You're like an idiot. Like, it's like... Imagine I, music. No, you... Okay, wait, but hang on. You say that. You like say that. Idiot. But, but... Like, there... Let's move away from, like, body fat. Yeah. I think there are women out there that are so beautiful that put so much stuff in their face. Oh, and I And they're already beautiful. That. Okay, but you can't say... This is why, as a man, you can't say this. Okay, because... Why? Because... I don't think that you understand mm. 
It's not your responsibility, but you also don't understand the pressures. And this is why I was trying to bring that conversation up is that I think that a lot of the things that women feel pressured to do with their faces do relate to this desire attraction. Mm. But that's what I'm trying to say is that there's a difference between sexual attraction and finding someone beautiful. Mm. Don't you think? Or I'm not putting words in your mouth. This is what I was trying to get at before because Mm. I was trying to understand there is... Sometimes I can't explain why someone's beautiful, right? Yes. So you mean like that? Yeah, exactly. That person's energy is is like... like beautiful, but they may not fit that kind of like beauty model that everyone's like starting to look the same. I mean, Yo, I had the, they all look the same. I'm like, was that her or was that her? Yeah, because it's it's the same kind of thing that's going on. I'm not throwing shade at women because I understand the pressures that women are under. And I also, um, you know, I'm lucky enough to feel confident in my looks. Mm. I think that has a lot to do with my mum. I think it has a lot to do, obviously genetically, but I mean, as in yeah. I have, it has a lot to do with the fact that she never, yeah, she never wore was... makeup and she never talked about beauty. Yeah, she but... never talked about fat. She never exercise for her was always about mental stuff and she never I never saw her look in the mirror and be like this xyz anything there was nothing I mean it just I just never heard her say it it. all the the only value that she had and the only like potential for um you know some of the like things I've had to work through have Mm. been like my association to my exercise identity and performance on that front like she is always like I need a marathon I need to do Mm. this I want to do this and so that's the only thing I recognize that in the world there are intense pressures on women. There is, yeah. But I also feel like you're willing to ask why. You think they're not willing to ask why? Uh, you are willing to ask yeah, why, which I, is a big... Yes. Like, obviously, you were exposed to like your mom, which she brought you up very well and not create those stresses for you and whatnot. But yep. like, you also had the will to ask why and work on yourself. To, yes you know what I mean and yes. I feel like people comes back around to everyone actually choosing the to easy ask why option. before that yeah but I don't even know if it is that easy Darren like is it easy to go under the knife is it easy to like it's easier than dealing with it it is it's easier it's easier I don't know if you than, can say that e- I think I can it's easier to um, get because, liposuction but, but, than going to the gym it's easier to not focus on your diet and pay attention mm. Um, it's easy. It's easier to not pay attention to your diet and do the right things consistently for six to eight months, whatever it is, instead of where you can just go and shake diets or whatever. Like you know, everyone's mm. taking the everyone takes the route of society and these problems come to this position. I think is because people avoid the difficult route, yeah, the struggled route. So therefore, when they take but the that's easy, human nature. It's the first instinct, but then what happens when you overload that? Yeah, totally. You know, I I get what you're saying. I mean, I think I think I I do. I hear what you're saying. I just feel like when I think about the pressures that women are under, um, and look, I do think yes, my my um message <laughs> would be as a content creator <laughs> with some influence, I would feel like I would want someone to just question whether that's really the answer because is it going to address the thing like fine if you want to get something done to your face or or do something to your body um you just have to then question ultimately underneath like is this a feel am I trying to fill a void that won't truly be filled by doing this thing in Mm. some cases some women have said and you know I've had conversations with these girls where, where we're like they're like, hey, I've done the questioning and at the end of the day, this is my chance to express mm. myself in whatever way I want to. It's my art. It's an extension. Like makeup. Some women can say like it's an extension of art for your yeah, face. Yeah. It's how you express yourself. It's clothing. It's like it's the same. It's just an extension of that. And now we yeah. have technology where we can do that. So it's like you want perkier cheeks? Fine. That's an extension of that. But I think it's just saying like just double check <laughs> that it's not this other thing, mm. that it's not this other thing where you're not questioning. What is it usually 90% of the time? Is it the other thing? Or not? Sam, we don't have the statistics. So I know what you think it is. <laughs> I'm, what I think it is, you obviously can tell from my <laughs> smile, but I can't say that. I can't say that because I don't have yeah. the facts. No, we don't have the facts and we don't know. And also like I think, you know, if people did comment, on the podcast, I know it's not the same thing, but it's like I think that they would find or you would find that there wouldn't 
not every single woman would be in a place where she was like, oh, I, I hated myself so I changed it through mm-hmm. this. It was more just this thing of like, yeah, I just wanted this extent. I mean, because look, at the end of the day, you could argue that makeup is the same thing. It's just a smaller technology, right? As in it's like not as complex technology, but makeup's the same thing. I'm wearing makeup today. Yeah, but you know what I mean? barely anything. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. The point is, is like, I'm still wearing it. Why am I wearing it? Okay, because there's a certain standard I want to meet mm. if I'm going to be on camera. And so then if you really start to pick away at that thing. But you're not changing. I'm not going under the knife. No, I'm not, not going knife, under. But even with your makeup style, you're, I'm seeing more of Shona. Right, not, right. You're saying I'm like enhancing. Shona. The physical expression. Of Shona. Yeah. Not Kim Kardashian. Changing. <laughs> not Kim. Which is what every fucking person is trying to look like. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I guess like if we look at some of the evolutionary answers for that, there there are reasons mm. for why people are kind of starting to look the same because yeah. those cues, those there's a really great book for anyone that's listening that's kind of like getting fired up at this conversation. <laughs> if you're getting mad about it. It's a great book by a lady named uh, Professor uh, Harvard professor harvard professor um her name's nancy etkoff and she wrote an incredible book called um sorry that's called the science of beauty hang on i'm going to check it can you can yeah, hold yeah. the fort of yeah, my yeah. podcast all good yeah yeah all good all good says yours you got your ipad out i bought my notebook to look smart <laughs> I, really need to, um, I need to get this oh, I've got no internet. have you got internet can you just google right now on your yeah, phone one sec. yeah <laughs> one sec i've got texas too one sec one sec one sec one sec <laughs> So basically, Actually, she wrote an incredible book. Um, once we get the title, right now, sorry. Nancy. Okay, let's have a look. Um, you got kind of silence on the podcast. She's a psychologist, <laughs> Harvard researcher at Harvard University, um, and the book is called "Survival of the Prettiest: mm. The Science of Beauty." It is. Is it cool? A game changing book. Really? I would even get I'll it on Audible. It. Oh, is it? Okay, no, no, cool. both. It's both. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. read or okay. wh- however you no, receive you think I'd benefit information. From it, that understanding. You would 100% benefit oh, from okay, it. Okay, cool. Not because I think you've got a bad opinion or anything like that. No, I mean, it's like, it's depth. very yeah, interesting yeah. to understand the origins of why we seek to have yeah, yeah. certain types of beauty, why yeah, yeah. it's all moving in the same place. So basically, it's like things like longer lashes creating an illusion that the eye is bigger because the eyes are bigger during fertility, during ovulation. Oh, wow. So there's okay. like all these different cues yeah, that yeah. happen, right? We assume that bigger boobs mean like a better, better at producing but it's not the case but like we make these assumptions right different things hips things like that can be indicative of can be indicative of and and maybe on the savannah they used to be indicative of high fertility but the problem is is that now that you can fake it it doesn't mean the same thing (laughs) fertile what's going on yeah you always say that exactly (laughs) because that's your running thing exactly that's your running narrative and so that's what beauty is often and she Mm. talks about it in this book after lots of research so this is not me just kind of like bringing some random pop psychology fact to the table this is like a please listen to the book particularly if it makes you mad hearing what we've just been talking about because i think like it can make people feel mad being like fuck you like fine for you to say but you're not the one out there like trying to get attention from men or trying to get a good relationship or trying to feel beautiful in this world that's constantly telling me that i'm ugly so that's the voice right we can definitely say that that is definitely one argument you're so much more empathetic when someone says to me that sort of stuff i'm like why why don't you question why you feel like that you know, but I think even that's if I problem. question why, yeah. even if they question why, Darren, they are not going to be able to just like walk the fucking talk. Mm. Like it's one thing to say, yes, you think these women don't understand that logically yeah, yeah. they're like, okay, yeah, I don't want to have to spend my cash on this. Botox is probably expensive. So is anything. Makeup's fucking expensive. Yeah. People don't want to spend their money on that. Yeah, they feel like they have to. But they feel like they have to. So you have to take clues from that, fam, and be like, okay, there's obviously a reason that this is happening. There's obviously a pressure. How do I, as a man that wants to protect my queen, (laughs) how do I want to make a difference? Is it to keep fucking telling those women that they suck? Probably not, fam. It's to be like, I don't do that. I see you. I don't tell them that they suck. No, you don't. No, that's like. But you can't throw shade on it. You just have to more be like, okay, I see mm-hmm. you. How do I as a man make yeah. you feel better? If I'm being like, my approach on that would be like to rattle someone a little bit. Be like, yo, you're pretty without it. 
Okay, yes. And that's always saying. been my approach. Like, okay, because, how's that working out for your relationship? It, it, it works fine. When I, I know it works fine with my clients as well. I just grab them. I'm like, yo, you don't need that. It's a tough love approach. It's a tough love, but it's also like it's fair. It's enough. genuine. It's genuine. So people, I think people can usually tell if it's genuine or not because people are weird when they talk to people about problems. You know, whereas I feel like I'm really not, I'm quite comfortable with uncomfortable conversations. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So like, even if it's like eating disorders and stuff, when I get clients talk to me about that, I'm technically not qualified, but I'm talk, I'm happy to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, and that's the interesting thing about being a PT, right? Is that you're sometimes met with like things a that lot. probably are out of the scope, yeah. but then they don't feel, either they don't have the money to go to yeah. a psychologist or they don't feel comfortable to they or want to do it. Sometimes when you talk to your client so much, you know more about your client than the doctor will ever know because they don't spend that much time. A doctor, a psychologist, their partner. Like we ha are privy to very interesting conversations. <laughs> Really, truly, no, that no, I think legit. people don't understand. And I don't think it's a bad thing, but this is one of the things that I'm advocating for now is where I'm like, I'm doing this psych degree. I want to push for the PT accreditation to have much more psychology in it mm. because otherwise PTs are learning on the job yeah. and that's dangerous. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, or even influencers should probably have some level of yeah, awareness yeah. and have to do some accreditation course that defines their ability to recognize where they might be. Yeah. Like they should go through a psych test. Yeah. They should do a body dysmorphia test. Instead if you want to be going, a fitness influencer, a PT, anything, yeah. you should have to go through your own DSM-5 yeah. kind of thing. Instead of going straight online. Instead of going straight online and having yeah. a platform and being able to like perpetuate it. Mm. I mean, I don't, I don't see it. And I'm sure there's people that are much smarter than me that know what the answers are. Right now, the tech companies don't give a fuck. Oh, yeah. They just want more eyes on there. Yeah. Okay. Course. So like <laughs> we talk about big pharma. But even we need to talk about yeah, big tech. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's no regulations. You yeah. can keep us on this addictive piece of thing for hours and hours and hours and hours. I think we're going to look back on life these days and go fuck do you remember like in the same way that we look back on smoking ads in the 70s there were ads oh, yeah. everywhere people were smoking everywhere it was fine to smoke around your baby you could smoke pregnant all these things i think we're going to look back on this and go oh my Can't god back in the day yeah I, oh, it's so funny back in the day there were no time restrictions you could sit on there forever mm. i think they're going to have to find a way to place time restrictions mm. like where it locks you out yeah I know people have self-inflicted, but like I have the thing on that tells me like you've spent an hour on Instagram today, and I'm like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Do you get that thing, I'm the boss? Yeah. Like yeah, you yeah. can set the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just ignore it. Yeah. So I think like there's a lot. We all get to that point, yeah, for sure. How long has it been? Probably like two hours, fam. <laughs> I might have to wrap it up, you know. Yeah, but I feel yeah. like I can talk to you for fucking ever. I feel like we should do this on a mushroom trip one day. Whoa. Imagine. I don't know. Actually, I'll probably sit in silence, to be honest. I'll be like. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like solving world problems in my head. That you guys really are really smart. good at talking on mushrooms. I like, yeah. I like. You can have like conversation and stuff like that. Depends who it's with. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Depends who it's with. Depends you do the whole like nature thing, don't oh, you? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, I'm not advocating drug taking. Yeah, yeah. One day it will be all, there's like lots of stuff coming out. No, with it's like already happening. Therapy yeah. and. Yeah. Yeah. Like of psilocybin, yeah. yeah. But like it's mad because oh man, it just makes me so connected to the world, like to earth. And I'm just like, oh, this whisper, this is like, I feel like we're numb now. Hmm. Bad. <laughs> and I feel like that is what life should feel like. Yes. And when I did it in the Blue Mountains. Yes, with, beautiful. With, uh, with some of the boys went camping the effect of it wasn't too much because it was like we were already there because mm. there was nothing as in like the hallucinogenic effect wasn't strong there was no we didn't have any tech no connection nothing yeah, nice. only fire food nature yeah and it was like you already felt like you were there where you get to with mushrooms does that make sense yes so the effect didn't seem as heavy Yes, yes. And I went like four grams deep, I think, three and a half, wow. four grams. Yeah, yeah, nice. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, this is quite, it's nice. It's definitely something that um, is, is going to be a profound, have a, a profound effect on our society moving forward if we can do it. For sure. Um, sure enough. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I mean, tell everyone where they can find. They know where they can find oh, yes. you. But you, you, can find on, you can find me on Instagram and you can check out my website, shonavirtue.com. Yeah, and you can find me because this was her podcast. <laughs> no, I was joking. Thank you so much for coming. It was great to see you. Thank you. For Guys, me. make sure you subscribe, like, share, comment. All, all the, the things. Thank you, Hector.
Yeah, cheers. <laughs> See you guys later. Peace. Boom.